Good afternoon, everyone. This is Jason Glatzer, and welcome to everyone watching on Facebook and YouTube. We are here at the Battle of Malta. We have reached the final nine, and today we're going to be broadcasting this final table live. You can see some of the names and the chip counts. Now we have Dario Barone in the chip lead with 9.3 million, and on the other end of the spectrum, we have Andrea Agnoletto with about 2 million. Uh, you can see all the yes. graphics and the names yes, in between. We'll be sharing surnames okay, as the good. time goes on. Uh, we already introduced okay, we the players start, yes. that was not on the okay, live stream. I uh, had the like honor of again? doing yeah. that okay, as no, well. And I'm looking forward oh, to seeing sure. who will win this 156,500 euro top prize and forever enter their name in the Battle of Malta history books. And here we have Nino. Uh, right. giving the players some instructions before the start of play. Right. There's no phones allowed at the table. You see Mikhail getting a little hydrated there in uh, seat number four. He uh, is the sole Israeli at the table. We have a few Italians. In seat one, we have Fabian uh, Roli from Switzerland, and we also have Miguel Bolivar from Spain, and Victor Frida from France. So it's quite an international affair despite there being many players from Italy. For those of you watching from Italy, you will not have to listen to English all day long. I promise to have some Italians in the commentating booth with me, including Jack Bonora and Cesare Antononi, who have been providing you coverage throughout the week. Marcello Colero is also going to join us. But we're straight into the action here. Uh, let's see what's going on. I love these graphics. This is all new to me. I got a preview of it the other day, but this is Two, new, and you can four, see those three, cards three, are actually on fire, the board cards. And we have Mikhail right away, first hand, jamming it in for 2.4 million. Cards are still at 150k big blind, so this is quite a big jam with King-9 suited from middle position. Let's see if anybody else wakes up with a hand. And we have Andrea here, Agnuleto with the tens. I don't expect him to go anywhere. I mean, this is a premium hand to begin with. He is the short stack leading up. He would be in excellent shape if he called, as we could see from the equities, about a 3 to 1 favorite. He does indeed get his stack in, so right away we have fireworks, folks. Was not expecting this. I have not been taking a peek at the action. Very first hand, we have an all in and a call with Andrea Agnoletta at risk. We could have our first elimination, or if Andrea's tens hold. We could have Mikhail very short on chips down to just under three big lines. So here we go. The cards are tabled, folks. So far, so good for those tents. Andrea, though, is sweating a little bit. He does also have that club backdoor flush. But hopefully he does not need it. But that club over there basically brings Mikhail down to just two outs because that king of clubs would complete a flush. And what suspense we have. We have Mikhail standing up, praying for that two-outer, but it's the ace of hearts to complete the board on the river. And Mikhail has doubled up Andrea Agnoletto on the very first hand of the final table. And now Mikhail is going to be the short stack by far with under three big lines. Two millions. That's good news from the fans from Italy, but the Israelis also have a giant rail, and I can't imagine that Mikhail is too pleased with the first hand here, nor is his rail. It was a little bit of a loose shove. It almost worked if Andrea did not have tens in his hand. Yeah. Yeah. But now Mikhail is very short, desperately needing a double. Because if those blinds do go through him, he'll be out of chips. So let's see how this plays out. We could have an elimination very early on. We almost had one here on the very first hand. You can see our amazing audio visual crew. We have uh, some photos being taken of the dealer, of the players. There's going to be many photos throughout the day. My colleague and partner in crime, Arvid, will be sharing that throughout the coverage, he will be reporting the final table. He will be listening in as well. And we're going to try to sneak him into the booth at some point later in the coverage because he's done a fantastic job all week, as, as had 
the entire team here at the Battle of Malta. Wait. So, hey, there's more than hey, 1 million hey, euro in the prize pool for this okay. main event, which is double the 500,000 guarantee. So bravo once again to the organizers of the Battle of Malta, Can once again bringing players down? from so many different countries. There were 40 or 50 Lithuanians even here on the plane Six with me call. over. Many players from Pass. Israel, from Italy, from Central Europe. A few Pass. came in from far away, places like the States as well. But meanwhile, we have Mikhail deciding at 10-7 is where he's going to get a short stack in. And we have Yunyu, otherwise known Pass. as the third Andrea at the table, pulling from the hijack. He is a head ace do suited, though. He's not going to really be ahead of very many hands by much, unless there's a two mixed in there. So this could actually be a decent so spot for Mikhail to double. Fabian opting to uh, to call here as well, our sole Swiss player at the table. So Mikhail could potentially up? triple up. But instead, we have two hearts on this spot. This increases Yunyu's equity. Check. Expect him to be betting check. Fabian off the pot here, but it does go check, check. And we have check. the eight of diamonds on the turn. Check. The board pairs. There's still some outs, but the queen of clubs was not one of them. Check. Unless something check. fancy happens, Should we'll have Yunyu eliminating Mikhail. And indeed, that is what happened. So good game to Mikhail out in ninth place on the second hand of the final table for 14,480 euros. A tremendous payday for the 600 euro buy-in. We had the honor of watching him throughout the day yesterday. Had a very unorthodox style that seemed to work well for him. And you can hear the round of applause. There is Nino getting rid of the chair, giving the players a little bit more space there. And I believe Mikhail is off for his exit interview with our audiovisual team. And already, straight off the bat, down to eight players. Was not expecting this kind of fireworks early on. Rise up new level. And for those of you that are interested in chatting with me, you can hop onto the Facebook stream. That is where I am looking at the chat. I see a lot of you are rooting for your favorite players in Italian. We have Gaetano saying, don't try this at home. That's exactly correct. Perhaps shoving for as much as Mikhail did on that first hand, which is king nine suited at a final table where there are ICM implications. It was not the best move. Of course, we would not be talking about this if it happened to get through. And blinds now have gone up already to 100,000, 200,000. They just had five minutes of play remaining from last night on the previous blind level. So all stacks are now effectively shorter. The blind level after this will be 100,000, 250,000. So that jump is not going to be that severe, which is amazing about the structure of the Battle of Malta. But here we have Julio with the big slick with the min rays from under the gun. Andrea. It looks like Andrea folded because that is Miguel in the picture anyway. And what does Dario Barone have? King 5, is he going to defend this to an under the gun open? He would be dominated range wise. If he did, it could have been trouble if he called and there was a king on the flop. So Julio DiSalvo picking up the blinds in Anthe, not the worst scenario with Big Slick. No, Obviously no, not the best I'm, scenario I'm either. <laughs> it's less stressful for me. The players were very friendly with each other heading into the final table. Everybody talking to each other in a group while waiting for their photos to be taken. And from what I can tell, now that Mikhail is on the rail, this is a table full of professional players. As far as I know, every player at this final table plays poker for a living. At least talking to at least more than half the final table over the course of the last couple days, that appeared to be the case. And Yun Yu here, Yun Yu, 
I'm just going to start calling him Andrea because that's what he is known as. But Andrea Lou here folds, and Miguel is probably not going to be folding Base his pochos. Does Min raise his snowman? Decisions, decisions for Victor. I don't expect to see him flat, but he could rebet this, he could fold this. Maybe he will flat in position, but I think that would be the worst of the three options. He does indeed fold. Fabian, who had a lot of chips at one point yesterday, is now near the bottom of the pack, but still has a healthy 17 big blind stack. We see okay, back to back blocks. I don't think we'll see Julio defend at the final table with this. No, he does not. And Miguel picking up some chips, getting closer to Dario Barone for the chip lead. There's about a million chips separating the two, which is just five big lines. After these two players, we have Andrea Dominici and Andrea Lu with some chips. And then the rest of the players are either in the middle of the pack or down at the bottom. Yeah, Mikael, can you please drink it? Ah, ah okay. I absolutely love this final table set up. I posted on my Facebook this morning as uh, <laughs> the room was empty, what the final table looked like and all how they removed all the poker tables. There's at least 100 seats for people to watch. A lot of them are empty at the moment, but if you feel like coming down, come on down to the Intercontinental Malta, Casino Malta, where the final table is taking place. You're more than welcome to join, to cheer, watch the action unfold live. If not, I am honored to have you with me, Jason Glatzer, on this broadcast. Big one, Anta. It's been a fantastic week. We kicked things off back on May 31st. So it's been a full week of poker action. The main event started a day later on June 1st. So a lot of these players have been battling it out for a long time. And there's a few that I, we know of that have basically made it to near the end of an opening fight only to lose their stack and try again the next day. So for those players in particular, a lot of hours of poker to get them to where they are now. So regardless of where any of these players finish, they should be very proud of their achievement of making the final table. Of course, at this point, all players have their eyes on that 156,500 euro top prize, as I would in this spot. But then a day or two later, wherever you finish, you should be happy with your overall performance. Dario playing Base, position here. Opening up the button for 425. A little more than a min raise. Now, while Andrea would probably be folding to an early position raise, he may not be folding to a button raise. Let's see how he approaches this. Andrea Dominici. Call. Appeared to be a very good player throughout it's the up. week. We covered a few hands with him. Does indeed Check. defend to see the 9 ace 4 rainbow flop. Does not hit either player. Andrea technically ahead, but if Dario continues, he might be able to take down the pot like here. 300. Andrea has some backdoors. May not believe that there's an ace there. May even feel he's good, but Dario is firing out a small bet of 300,000. About one quarter of the pot. Yes. And gets the job done. That's the power of position. Some easy chips there by the chip leader. Now Dario, uh, for those of you that don't know, was on a final table recently in an event that I was covering. I was reporting that event, unfortunately did not commentate the final table of that one. And we know that he is hungry for the title as all the players are, but perhaps more so for him because he's already been on a final table this month. And I know he would love to get that trophy that we see in the background there.
They even paid attention to the dealer chair. That looks like the most comfortable chair I have ever seen for a dealer before. But the dealers have been fantastic all week. So shout out to them. Shout out to all the four. But back to the action. We have Victor now with a hand with Ace King suited. We know he'll be raising just for how much we don't know. But now we see it's a mid raise. So far, no fancy play from any other player. Omanichi also folding his jack five. But now, Gun Yu, who had the, has the ten, so I don't expect him to be going anywhere. Whether it's going to be a three bet or a call is the only question. He does have Victor covered. Andrea Liu played quite well yesterday, reading situations correctly from what we see. Of course, we did not see the whole cards yesterday when we were reporting the action. But he's one player in particular. I was very interested to see how he's playing when we can see his whole cards. And now we'll get an idea of what he does with the tens. He's all in. And he's all in for 7.7 .7 million. So I don't see Victor going anywhere. We could see a massive pop with a flip. Andrea Lou making a move from the big blind. I guess he doesn't want to have to play this post flop out of position. Let's just jam it. And Victor free to call. So we have fireworks again. An 11 million chip pot. Whoever wins this pot is in the chip lead easily. And Victor, though, isn't able to connect with his big slick. He is out the door in eighth place. Let's see the flop. Yes, you already put it. Usually at a final table, you don't see this kind of fireworks very early on. So far, the tens are ahead. Victor's ace and king are alive. He does have a spade backdoor to the flush as well. There is still some hope for Victor. You can see his equity is not that far off. And the six of spades, that does help Victor. Even though it doesn't connect with the ace or the king, it does give him a flush draw with one more card to come. And it's the blank four clubs on the river. So we've already down to seven players. Congratulations to Victor for finishing in seventh place for 24,200 euro. And eighth place, I'm sorry, for 18,800 euro. But now the final seven have each locked up 24,200 euro. And this final table is becoming more and more Italian by the moment. We lost our player from France and previously lost our player from Israel. We still have a player from Switzerland and a player from Spain at the table. Otherwise, it's an all Italian affair. And we do have our first new chip leader in Andrea Liu with 13 million box, chips. Yes? We have Dario Barone who came in with the chip lead. He has chipped up a little bit, sitting at 9.5 million. And on the other end of the spectrum, we have Andrea Agnoletto and Fabian Moli with the short stacks. With Fabian being the short stack, he has some playability with that 16 big point stack. At the moment, it is still one hour blind levels. The battle of multi structure, though, does shorten the clock when we get down to shorthanded play. But right now, we are still at one hour oh, fine levels. Oh. Oh, no. If things continue at this pace, we could no, be looking Mr. at a very oh, short no. final table. Okay. Uh -huh. but now, player stacks have to be a bit deeper no, in terms of average big blinds. He wants me to do the mistake. Press. And things can change very quickly for all the players at the table. As we could see based on that last pot that came out of nowhere and put Andrea Liu in the chip lead. Not the worst hand for Andrea to have from the button. Let's see what Mr. Dominici tries to do here. We know he's not folding. 
little more than a min raise in seconds Pays coming out, maybe to 450. We'll get that confirmed in a second. And it is indeed to 450,000. Andrea Liu with the pretty Queen 10 suited. <laughs> I don't expect him to fold. He may opt to three bet, he may opt to call. I mean, may opt to uh, call. Of course, he can fold. But he could start putting pressure on some players as well with the three bet here. Call. He does just call. And Miguel Bolivar may opt to call as well. He is priced in. Call. With the seven high flop though, he could be in a little bit of trouble there with Andrea Dominici holding that A7. And not the worst spot for Andrea Lu there. Two diamonds mixed in there. Check. Expect the players in the blinds to check. And when check. you have A7 and it's a paired board like that, even with the small blind calling, you very often think you're ahead. Check. Does check though. Not wanting to give away some valuable chips, but now it's a nine of clubs on the turn. All of a sudden, that flush draw doesn't look nearly as good because if, let's say, either of the players have a pocket pair, they already have a full house. But it looks like Yu Nu is reaching for chips. And I'm going to go back and forth on his name. I spoke to him, and he goes by Andrea Lu in Italy. Bet 600. So we have two other Andreas on the final table. 2023 Battle Hall of the Spring Edition is all about the Andreas. And Andrea Liu with the 600,000 bet does get one fold. Will Dominici, who is ahead at the moment, sniff this out and call? Even though he's in position, it does put him in a tough spot because if Andrea, even if he thinks he has the best hand, it's going to be hard for him to call like a big river bet if Andrea Liu is able to parlay it out. But I do like the call here. Heads up. And it's a king of diamonds on the river, so Andrea Liu improves to that flush, but Andrea can be repping a lot of kings that he'd be opening up with. It's very often a case, if you're Andrea Liu, that you're thinking about how to get more value and it may be like a check call so that you're not potentially betting and then put in a spot where you might be holding the best hand if you're raised, but it doesn't seem like people right now are making these fancy moves quite check. yet. So we'll see how this plays out and Andrea does indeed check. Dominici may check back, thinking he has showdown value. We know that if he checks back, he does not win this hand, but if he does bet it, maybe he can get it. But with ICM implications, it's very hard to pull that off in real time. Easy for us to say when we can see the cards, and it does get checked back, and you knew. Andrea Liu, extending his chip lead now up to 15 million chips. That's easily a high for the Battle of Malta main event in oh, terms okay. of chip count. I was chatting with several of the team, including Arvid before, about Andrea Liu, about how he was an interesting player to follow yesterday. I look very stupid when I'm just, you know, you seem to the always know what to do in every spot. They don't hear me, they don't hear you, so now they hear me. And right now is favored to win, but of course there's six other players that will say otherwise. And now Andrea Wu on the button. Bobby, I'm not getting any cards early on. Dario will open here. Not the strongest ace, not the weakest. Does opt to give up. Chips are very valuable at this point in time. And 
Julio DeSalvo going to open up? Nope. I thought he would, but it's Andrea Dominici to open up with his ace three. We saw that there was another ace out with the ace seven held by Dario Barone. And Andrea Liu does fold. Looks like it's going to be a walk for Dominici. I'm sure he'll be pleased with that. Even in position, a hand like ace three does not flop super well. And picks up an easy half million into his stack. And I like how we had a close up of those uh, cards being shuffled around. There's so many different camera angles. I was in the back room where the technicians are for the stream and they literally have like more than a dozen views with all the cameras that are set up. You can't see the cameras, but they are there. It's quite an impressive setup by the MST audiovisual team. A big shout out to them. They've been preparing for this final table throughout the week and loving the unique graphics they have. And we have uh, a saying that the Battle of Balta is on fire by Gaetano. And you can see those cards are on fire as we're waiting a flop turn and river. But big shout out to Gaetano for all the amazing work he's done this week on social media. And I'll keep mentioning people that are on the team because everybody has worked very hard to make the Battle of Malta what it is. Of course, spearheaded by Telly and Diane. Much love to both of them for inviting me back out. I had to miss the last one due to a conflict with my old company not allowing me to come. I am one of the reasons I left that company because we had a pre-agreement that I could always do the Battle of Malta because that is my favorite event to commentate over the course of the year with all the excitement throughout the week coming to a pinnacle today. Slick for Andrea, gets a walk. Andrea keeps adding and adding chips to his stack. Perhaps we get his graphics changed to say Andrea rather than his given name. He does like to be called Andrea Junior, and I can't really pronounce his given name all that quite well. Especially yeah, since I good. lost a bit of my voice yesterday. Today it seems like it is mostly back. And Dominici here. Thinking about his jack nine suited, it is a pretty hand, but better from late position than early position. But I don't expect Andrea Lu to do anything uh, other than raise with his ace seven suited. Is the chip leader, should be opening a lot of pots with looser hands at this point in time, putting the pressure on everybody. As Andrea has shown he's not afraid to play a big pot. He did jam with those tens early on. Does indeed open to 450. So far, so good. Nobody having anything to play back with. Let's see what Fabian does, though. He hasn't shown up with anything close to resembling a hand. This is the closest thing that we've seen. It is down to just 15 big blinds, with the blinds going through him. There is ICM in mind. We may see him fold. We may see him jam. I do not think we're going to see him just call on from the short stack. With Fabian deep in thought while other players are rippling their chips. 
decides now is not the time. It would have worked, I think. We could see the two chip leaders battling it out, though. I think Dario will likely defend his King Nine suited. Oh. Dario Barone, as I mentioned, was on a final table recently in an event I covered. Heads up. And understands poker quite well, understands that the chip leader should be opening wide. And does now flop top pair on this A Queen King Rainbow flop. Barone is going to check just about every flop, including this one. And Nu Nu trying to rep that he has uh, gotten somewhere on this flop. Barone is not going to go anywhere to a bet of 325,000. Oh. Does indeed call. Oh my, Ace of Spades on the turn, pushing Andrea Lu ahead. Okay. Expect to see him fire again. You don't want those hands that have a jack or a 10 to potentially get there, or in this case, a king nine to get there. And it's quite a sizable bet of around half the pot by Andrea Lu. Is Dario gonna be able to snip this one out? Nice discipline there by Barone. Does get away from the hand when he was behind, stayed in when he was ahead. Seemed to have a good read of where he was at. And if he looks back on the stream, he will be happy to see that he folded there. Ah, hey Tati. So Tati Blind in the chat. Tati uh, was just in Malta. Happy 50th birthday, although maybe I shouldn't be giving out the number. Uh, to Tati, he uh, had a birthday about a week or two ago. I had to leave Malta before then to my home in Lithuania, but I would have loved to celebrate, but Tati did celebrate my birthday with me in Malta. And uh, I did appreciate the gift from him and some of the other Swedes did give me and he did pay for uh, not only my dinner but wound up paying for some other people's dinners as well which was not part of the deal but uh, do appreciate Tati not only for that but for everything else a fantastic guy I would have him in the booth with me right now if he was in Malta but he was in Hungary I believe and I think on his way to Bratislava he is a globetrotter but much love to Tati who was calling Malta his home for many years now Fabian, back to the action. Fabian, who hasn't had a hand he could potentially play other than that Queen Jack we saw last hand. He won't be shy to get it in here with his big slick. Once again, if nobody has anything to play back with, he does increase his stack significantly just by getting this blind, so it's not a worst case scenario. Although he does need to double up at some point. Unless he can just be stealing blinds left and right, but that's very hard to do as the short stack. And let's see what Julio DeSalvo does here with this 10-7. It is a very defendable hand from the big blind. And I like to see that he's taking his time with decisions. Does indeed call. So two of the short stack players tangling up in a pot. Now this is a beautiful flop for Fabian. Flops the top pair, has a backdoor flush draw. All really Julio has here is a backdoor flush draw with the clubs. Expect this very often to go check bet fold. When you're on a two and a half million stack, which is 12 and a half big blinds at this point, you really don't want to be slow playing your hands. It is a small bet. Is DeSalvo going to reverse float this? No, he is not. And Fabian picking up some chips up to 3.6 million and getting closer to Julio's stack here with a 3.8. Nowhere near the 15 million that Andrea Lu has, who is the current chip leader at the final table. 
for those of you just tuning in, this is Jason Glatzer here with you uh, for the entire final table. Had an enjoyable time reporting this event. Harvard Cohen, my partner in crime, is still reporting busy in action. I see him with his headphones on, not too far away from me. So best of luck to Arvid as well with the reporting today. Left him solamente. I could see Jack Bonaro and uh, Cesare doing things in Italian. I will likely have one or both of them in the stream very shortly as well. And then we're going to move into a combination of English and Italian. Even though I grew up in New Jersey, whatever Italian I learned seemed to go goes in and out of my head. I can only remember Italian when I'm in Italy, and then it takes me a few days to even remember some Italian. You would think by now I could speak fluent Italian. This week at the Battle of Malta, with all the Italian players coming in, a lot of them do speak English, like Dario does speak English, for example. And speaking of Mr. Barone, the start of the day chip leader, he will be opening here with his ace four suited. And let's see what Andrea Dominici decides to do with it. Eight seven. Even though it's not suited, I would expect to see him defend here. It is just a min raise. I would be defending here, whether that's right or wrong is for up for debate. But these are the guys that navigated through a 2,000 entry field, if we're going to be exact, 1,992 entry field to make it to the final seven. Cool. So they certainly know better than I do. But does indeed defend. Nobody hitting this 9-4 king flop with two hearts. Nobody with hearts in their hand. Barone does hit bottom pair, but that's sort of meaningless. Check. But expect him to continue a lot of the time on a lot of kinds of flops. Bet 300. It does bet small, this should get the job done. Unless Dominici has a read on his opponent. Is double checking. Pass. And Dario getting back some chips. Back over 9 million. Yes. Still not near that 15 million that Andrea Wu has. Uh, yeah, there's. I don't. I think I can learn some Italian just by reading the chat here, so I'm assuming Forza Giulio means good luck to Giulio. Miguel Bolivar with the nines from under the gun. Base 400. Bolivar did open. It was a min raise. Pass. Pass. It's folded around to Dario Barone. Let's see what he does with the suited connectors. You can see that his hand is not very pretty at the moment compared to those nines. going through what Miguel can potentially be opening with from under the gun and then understanding that it's probably a very strong range. Dominici holding his queen jack and a queen jack here for Andrea Lu as well. Uh, normally this would be a coin flip situation but we did see a queen jack folded by Andrea Dominici so there's less outs in the deck. And I don't think Miguel is worried about any of those outs. In fact, he'd be happy if uh, Andrea Lu did hit a six or a five here, or even had the case nine. Check. Does slow play his top set on a scary board. Now maybe wishing he didn't. I mean, we know that Andrea Lu does not have an eight in his hand. 
but it wasn't the dry flop at all with two spades. The big blind has a lot in their range with those low cards coming out too. We could see that Miguel is far ahead, but it's Andrea Lu leading out. And now is Bolivar going to go into defensive mode? Or is he going to raise it? Does just call. Understanding there's a lot of uh, potential hands that are beating him or could beat him. Now we know that 10 of hearts is safe, but if Andrea Lu bets big, he's really putting Miguel into a tough spot. Despite flopping top set, now the board is a very scary board. And does bet on the, uh, it's not that big, it's 800,000 into a pot of uh, 1.9 million. Miguel with the snap call. Andrea tapping the table as a nice hand, but still has 15 million. Meanwhile, Miguel Bolivar moving into second place with that 9.5 million stack. Having a lot of fun this week at the Battle of Malta and really looking forward to the October edition already. I have been already invited back, so perhaps my team was doing a good job with the reporting as well and hope to crush the commentating today. But as I already mentioned, I did lose my voice yesterday. Wasn't sure if it was going to come back for today. Did get a very good night of rest, drank some tea, and I think my voice is nearly back. Andrea here with the uh, Queen Jack, one of the three Andreas out of the seven players remaining. Pays 400. Min raises and even better suited connectors here by Fabian. Fabian Rolly, a professional player from Switzerland, mentioned uh, to me before the start of the final table that he traveled here alone. Yes. And I'm sure he's very happy that he did travel, even if it's without uh, any compadres. And speaking of Switzerland, if you're listening, Maureen, shout out to you as well. I'm sorry that you couldn't make it to the Battle of Malta. Ah, we have Matthew Mikolev in the chat too. One of the local Maltese players that I've become friendly with over the years, especially since we spent some time together when I was playing at an event in Bratislava. Matthew, if you would like to join in the booth for 10 or 15 minutes and are local, you're more than welcome. It would be a pleasure to introduce you to the wider audience. Matthew is a very solid poker player and one of the nicest guys around as well. And sorry to those watching on YouTube. I'm only able to pay attention to one chat at a time while also watching the action. So I chose the Facebook chat the old Twitch stream was not made, was not revived for this, but otherwise I would be paying attention to the Twitch chat. But perhaps for the October edition, we can get the Twitch stream back live again too, but there's plenty of options to watch. You can go to thebattleofmalta.com and watch straight on the webpage. You can watch on the Battle of Malta Facebook channel or the Battle of Malta YouTube channel. Meanwhile, Dario Barone opening up from early position, a little bit of a loose open with the King 7 suited. Yes. Yes. So far he's getting away with it. Yes. Until now, we have Andrea Agnoletto with the snowman. I need to learn how to say eights in Italian. I know in Spanish it's ocho, but I don't think it's that in Italiano. Is Olin. And jams it. This will work. He jams it for 21 big blinds. Dario is certainly not thinking of calling off half his stack with King 7 suited, but is asking for a count. Yes. This is more for the benefit of the rest of the table to have him basically get into their heads a little bit that he's thinking, maybe make Andrea a little bit nervous as well. Andrea certainly would prefer a full tier. Maybe not if he knew he was up against King 7 suited, but 
typically in early positions opening range would be a bit, little bit better than that, but Agnuleto picking up some valuable chips just by shoving there. It didn't cost Dario too much with trying to get away with one as well. See, there's more and more people watching as the day comes on. We are kind of on Mediterranean time here in Malta. You ask a friend, for example, to meet you for lunch at 2 o'clock. Now, if it's a Swedish friend, they'll be there at 2 o'clock. If it's an Italian friend, I don't expect them until 2.15. But I love that about Italy. I love visiting Italy. It's one of my favorite countries. I've spent a lot of time in Rome, in Naples, in Sicily, Valencia, Milan. Rented a car once and just drove around the whole country for a few weeks with uh, my wife and a few friends. Unfortunately, that was back in 2009. So, but was in Italy and Rome last year as the pandemic was wrapping up and it was so lovely because it was an empty city. I could eat at all the best restaurants without reservations and it was fantastic. Didn't have to wait on lines for anything. But enough about that. We have Dominici here with the trays opening up for 450 from the hijack. Fabian taking his time with the 7-5 offsuit. And if he did defend, it is a coin flip situation. Does indeed fold. The pace is quite fast actually at this final table, so it's never a problem even if a player has a hand that they know they're going to fold, you take a few extra seconds to think things through. There is quite a lot on the line with the final seven locking up 24,200, mm -hmm. but the winner going home with much more with 156,500 euro top prize on the line. Ah, okay. do hope you've been enjoying the action early on. We have more of the team dropping by, saying hi. A fantastic job to the entire team here at the Battle of Malta. I look forward to working with them again in October. And we have Dominici here with the weak ace. Even though it's under the gun plus one, it is technically middle position at this point. Was in the low jack. And Andrea Liu, who had 16 million before, is still the chip leader with 14 million in change. No fancy play from him. Personally, when I have the chip lead at a final table at my local casino, I'm opening so wide. Same online. But I've been told I can be too aggressive. There are a few weeks in my game and I am not at this final table, so players here likely know better than this commentator does, despite me playing quite a lot of poker myself. When I'm not traveling around the world covering events, I am playing just about every night after my son is in bed. Shout out to Lucas if you're watching from home. Shout out to my wife, Yurgita, as well. Go. So interesting here, we have Fabian with the 9-7 limping and Dario, is he gonna put pressure on his short stacked opponent with the raise? Now he's checking it back with his 9-8, dominating that 9-7. But it's a 9-7 to pop the flush draw here. If Fabian does bet this, he will get it.
but perhaps wants to keep the pot small and wait till he hits that flush because if he bets and he's raised, he's put into a very awkward spot. Does just min bet it. I'm sure Fabian is fine with this outcome of taking down the pot. No one is coming or is coming uh, the new dealer? Should I do one more hand or no? No, no. Thank you. Oh, thank you guys. I may take Italian lessons before oh, I come back to the battle of office so I can so understand what many of you are saying oh. in the chat there. Okay, okay, good luck. <laughs> Yeah, if you have anything. No. Yes, he need to fix. I, it wasn't. I didn't. And there's always going to be a little bit of a pause when we have a dealer change because they have to hand over the mic. What happens here, if you're unfamiliar with how TV tables work, is the reason we can see the graphics that we do is that oh, the dealer is that communicating through that microphone <laughs> every bet and yeah. every action, and then the technicians yes. in the back are entering that, and that's what we get to see. Next level. We are Next on a level. 25 minute delay. That is yeah, why we can see the whole cards. Yeah, they will. Yes. He came without the microphone. Uh, but it doesn't look like we necessarily had a dealer change, but maybe a technical maybe adjustment the there. Domenici folds, but we have Andrea Lou with the ace queen. We know he's not folding. Looks like a raise to 450. Those orange chips are 100,000 each, the white ones are 25,000 each. Andrea folding a weaker ace, but we have Fabian here. We could have some more fireworks. I mean, I don't think that Fabian is just going to call here. He can't fold here. Or at least shouldn't fold here. And doesn't really have enough chips just for a small three, but I guess technically he does because he's on the button. But a hand like nines, I think when I'm on this kind of stack, I'm either shoving or folding, and folding is not usually in my vocabulary. In these kind of spots. It isn't a shove, but it might as well be. It looks like a raise to two million. Two so million, three hundred. Half a stack. 2.3 million, in fact. So while it's not a shove, if you get a call here, expect the rest of the chips to get in at some point. Or Andrea Liu may decide to poor call. bet shove himself. Okay, call. And now thinking things over, it looked like he was about to toss his cards away. <laughs> Thank God that Although maybe he was flipping them over thinking that he called. It was an all in situation. Yeah. But does just call here. So we have 5.1 million in the pot, and Fabian only has 1.3 million behind. So, unless it's like a ridiculous, like ace, king, queen kind of flop, expect the chips to get in. So, six, six, I mean, yeah. And it's an ace on the flop. Maybe that will save Fabian. I don't know. And Andrea jamming at it. Fabian understanding he doesn't have really too much to play with at that point. And Andrea Lou could be jamming with much, much less. Is now in for a world of hurt. We could see another player hit the rail just like that. He needs a nine or a seven, eight kind of combo for a straight. And it's a jack of spades on the turn. Now it's a nine and only a nine that can save Fabian. Otherwise, it's off to the showers. 
and it's a jack of hearts pairing the board on the turn. Good game to Fabian Rolly. Well played throughout the week. He will go home with the seventh place prize of 24,200 euro. You can see the smiles on his face. I'm sure he would have liked to have gone deeper, but being that he entered the day with 14,480 locked up, his hour or two of fame here at the feature table, at the final table, did earn him another 10,000 euro. And now the final six have each locked up 31,590 euro, with the prizes just going up from there. And if the technicians are listening to me, it would be nice to occasionally display in between hands things like the, uh, you know, the chip counts of the final six, things like that, if we have those graphics available. We do see them, obviously, as the hands go on, but it's, uh, it's a nice thing, nice little addition if we can incorporate that into this stream. Otherwise, I'm loving every moment of these graphics. The team has done a fantastic job. The camera angles are fantastic as well. And all we had to do was ask. Here we go. We have the graphics up. We see now that Andrea Liu is up to 19 million in chips. Now that's quite a gap. He has more than double that of Miguel Bolivar with 9 million. And Dario Barone, who began the day with the chip lead, is still in third place with 8.2 million. Andrea Dominici with 6 million. Andrea Agnulate in fifth place at the moment. And then we also have. I believe Julia DeSalvo as the remaining player, but the graphics went a little fast there, but we have the payouts as well, and I will be quiet during this interview. For those of you in the chat, if you can tell me if you're able to hear that exit interview or not, because I can't tell from my end, I wasn't able to hear it through my uh, headset. But it'd be good to know whether I should be quiet or not during those exit interviews. But Fabian Rolly seems like a super nice guy. And we've had players from three different countries already hit the rail. First to go is Mikhail Busiashvili, and sorry for butchering your surname there, in ninth place for 14,480 euros. And Victor Frida was next to go in eighth place from France. And now we just switched witnessed Switzerland's Fabian Rolli hit the rail in seventh place. So we have five Italians and one non-Italian in Miguel Bolivar waving that Spanish flag. So pretty soon we could have an all-Italian affair, in which case I will make sure we get the uh, Italian commentators in the booth with me, and we will also talk a little bit in Italian. Ah, thank you, Antoine, for that information. Good to see you tuning in. I wish I got to spend more time with you this week. That's Antoine de Gourgueri. He runs that Malta Pokerfish group. A fantastic group, lots of information in there. A fantastic guy, a good friend of mine. And Antoine, I'm staying for an extra day if you want to get lunch tomorrow, if you're free. Hit me up during one of the breaks or I'll uh, get in touch with you after the stream. Also, Antoine, if you're in town, I'm sure that people watching the stream at home or wherever they might be might want to watch. And it looks like we have a little bit of a break here. So I will be right back myself. Once again, this is Jason Glatzer tuning in live at Casino Malta. I will stick around because I'm not sure if this is a scheduled break or unscheduled one because I see players at the table. So for now, I will stay with you. And let's see, while we are waiting, who else we may have in the chat speaking in English. We can give shout outs to some of you not speaking English. I will butcher your name, so. Shirelli, welcome to the stream. Francesco, thank you for tuning in. Alessandro as well. Much love to all my Italian compadres. I do love the work that Jack Bonoro and Cesare Antononini have been doing all week long in Italian. We've been having some good laughs all week as well. 
at one point yesterday, they tried to get me to join them on their commentating. They were walking around with a, uh, with a camera, but I really needed to save my voice. I lost my voice yesterday, so although much, as much as I would have loved to have done that with them, uh, I had to pass, but I'm glad my voice is back today for the most part. So I'm glad I didn't go anywhere. It looked like just a stretch break, maybe a toilet break for some of the player, one of the one or two of the players. The players were uh, told that if you need a quick break for any reason, that we'd be happy to oblige, even if it's not a scheduled one, as long as it's a quick one. We want the players to be very comfortable at the final table. It could be a little intimidating for some players to be in the center of room with the lights and camera, with lots of fans watching the action live. But this is an experienced group of players, so I don't expect those nerves to last if they do exist. You can see players seem a bit more relaxed than before. But in general, a lot of these players have been in final table spots. I don't know if they've been in spots where they've been playing for as much money as they're playing for now. As we just mentioned, they have clocked up 31,519 euros. Uh, but there, in a few hours, we will see who will win that 156,500 euro top prize. But I'll definitely grab, I think, Jack during the break. I'm staring at Jack now, but I don't think he's listening to me. And we have so many Italians at this final table that it would be a shame not to have uh, Jack Benora at the, yeah, the booth definitely, here, definitely, definitely. combining his long. talents in English and in Italian. Lovely guy. The sports commentating and poker commentating in his home country of Italy, a lot of EuroLeague commentating. His basketball knowledge even exceeds mine, which is say, saying quite a lot. But we have Andrea Lu back to the action with the ace queen. Easy open from under the gun, but we have Andrea now contemplating what he should be doing with his ace jack suited. The two of these guys are friends. They have been chatting. Uh, they were at the same table yesterday when there were three tables left, having a good time together. And even when they were separated and at different tables, they would occasionally talk to each other. And we could have Andrea versus Andrea. As Junyu goes by Andrea, and Andrea goes by Andrea, believe it or not, as well. We have lots of people wishing Dario Barone good luck today in the chat. I shouldn't be surprised based on the love he was also getting recently when he was at another final table I was covering. And what will, will we have Andrea versus Andrea versus Andrea? There's still three Andreas left. And I think Dominici is going to get out of the way. Indeed he does. So two players heading to the flop. Neither player connecting with his king 8-7. Andrea Agnoletto, though, does have a backdoor flush draw. Technically, two backdoor straight draws. But it's uh, Andrea Lu currently in the lead equity-wise, anyway, with his ace-queen. But if his friend Andrea Agnoletto does bet... He might get this. Does check back. It's a blank three of diamonds on the turn, so there's no backdoors left for either player. Andrea Lu is currently in the lead by a lot, as Agnoletto, Agnoletto would need a jack to pull ahead. You may understand when Agnoletto didn't bet that flop that he can get away with the bet on the turn and take down the pot. It is a small bet, though. So while Andrea Lu didn't hit any piece of this board, and Andrea Agnoletto may recognize that Agnoletto is still behind. If he just calls, he's going to be giving away some chips, but a raise would take down the pot. 
does ND call. Maybe with a plan on the river if it's checked over to him. And it's a 10 of spades completing at the board on the river. So ace queen is still good. Queen kicker coming into play. And Andrea Liu deep in thought. It goes check check with bull players having some showdown value and it's Andrea Liu with the better ace to take down the pot and now is sitting on a massive stack of 20 million chips. That's about 40% of the chips in play. It was a little bit shy of 50 million in chips total with 1,992 entries. We did have one player disqualified that will factor the overall chip count, but that was like something like 88,000 for breaking a whole ton of rules on one of the opening fights. That will happen at events. If you're not taking your warnings and your behavior is getting worse and worse, you are potentially subjecting yourself to not being allowed to play anymore. And no, you're not going to get your buy-in back. and the dealers do have a lot of tolerance here so let's just say that that player did go overboard i'm not going to mention who it is it is a friend of a friend and someone that i'm friendly with as well and uh, everybody has a bad day but he paid for it dearly and julio de salvo with the pocket rockets, I don't remember anybody having pocket rockets yet. The salvo, likely counting his chips and seeing whether he should shove or raise. But he does have 16 big blinds if the graphics are correct. It's very easy for them to get out of whack by a blind or two. But it does look like he has about 3.2 million. Price. Announces a raise. It looks like a min raise, in fact, it is. And Andrea Dominici. The buttons opening raise can be wide, but not necessarily from a player, which is 16 big blinds that has been a bit quiet thus far does wisely fold his king-10. That's a results-oriented uh, comment, obviously. And Andrea Loon not wanting to play the 9-5. I'm sure Julio DeSavo would have been happy to play this hand post-flop. It's the best hand in poker. On the other hand, adding 500,000 to your stack when you have 3.2 million isn't the worst-case scenario. So many big blinds. No blind, no line. Although it, it would be a story to remember if your aces are cracked at such a big final table, that's the last thing you want to see happen. <laughs> so it looks like we're getting more and more viewers, so I am going to once again introduce myself. This is Jason Glatzer. I've been reporting to you live all week long, and now we're going to be commentating to you on a 25-minute delay. My colleague and friend Arvid has been busy today reporting what I am talking about, reporting off the stream. So if you need to step away for any reason, all the big hands will be on the BattleMalta.com. And fantastic job by Arvid. He pulled the weight at the end of the day. They got to about midnight and I turned into Cinderella and needed to go back to the room, needed the rest. My voice was gone. I was feeling a little bit sick. There were 10 players left, so I was reading from my room as Arvid was uh, bringing the blow by blow from 10 down to 9. And even if you are watching, you should check it out. He has wonderful intros today with some information about the players, information about what ICM would look like at the start of the day. Uh, I am going to miss him. I, this may be even the last event that he is live reporting in his 15-year poker career, but. I will try to convince him otherwise, but it may be me uh, talking to a wall at that point as well. Um, 15 years in this industry is quite a long time, and he is somebody that certainly deserves a lot of credit 
Uh, he's the type of guy that is always behind the scenes, doesn't want the spotlight, but we're going to put him in the spotlight today anyway, because uh, it's a lot of love that I have to give to, uh, to Arvid. I could have chose anybody I wanted to work with, and uh, there was Arvid, and then there was a massive gap between anybody else. That being said, I'm sure we'll be able to put together a fantastic team for the next Battle of Malta. I'm still going to try to convince Arvid to come out of retirement, but uh, probably will not happen. But back to the action here, we have Andrea Dominici opening with the ace-9, Miguel defending his big blind, and then flopping top pair on the 8-4-5 flop with two clubs, and now the four pairs aboard, there's hearts, there's clubs. Dominici may feel he's ahead with his ace-9, yeah, yeah. we see that he's not. After it went check-check, we expect Miguel perhaps to bet here, but on the other hand, uh, he decides to play this a little bit differently, play it a little bit safer. However, there's so many cards above that eight that he's putting himself into pretty much a check-call situation on a lot of rivers here. Sometimes it's better just to realize your value now. And Dominici here betting 475. I do not expect Bolivar to go anywhere. Maybe he's thinking about whether he should be check raising. But I do not believe he'll be folding. He does play it the safest way with just a call. Oh no, an ace on the river. Now, Miguel, if you let out on that turn, you wouldn't have had this problem. Check. And Miguel is going to be forced to check call a bet, depending on the sizing here. Maybe Dominici, now that he's actually hit this board, will check it back, afraid of some six sevens, afraid of some fours. But there's a lot of flush draws that Miguel could have. Obviously, he's going to be calling with an eight. As we see here, he'd likely be calling with something like uh, king five. 5-6, uh, 5-7, five, five, with that middle pair on the turn. Maybe he has some hands like ace-5 and ace-8, ace-4, but I would expect Dominici to try to get some sneaky value after hitting that ace on one the minute. river. Does bet 1 million, and now you can see Miguel looks like he's in a world of hurt unsure what to do. He kind of put himself in this spot. Perhaps that was the right way to play. I know that I am betting on the turn, but once again, I'm not the expert. These players have made it through a field of nearly 2,000 players to make it to this final table. Let's see if he could sniff this one out. And then, essentially, the way he played it, if he folds here, he lost them in. He can also decide to turn his hand into a bluff, which might work. So although Dominici did hit that ace, there are tons of hands that are beating that ace nine. You don't put Miguel on a better ace, but even a worse ace than, as we mentioned already, could bring a better two pair to the board. He, he has a lot of fours, he has the six seven, but does indeed get away. So nice discipline there by Miguel Bolivar. Gets away from the minimum. That could potentially be exploitable, though, as if you're going to put your player on an ace every time he's betting when an ace hits the river, it means he could be floating you or betting with you without really having anything and then playing it differently when that river card comes out. Of course, the players don't see what he folded, but... Even though they don't have phones at the table, when they take a break, players typically do talk to friends that are watching the stream. Ah, we have John Briscoe White, another friend of mine. John, if you want to get lunch tomorrow, I'll be around all day. Just hit me up afterwards. Although I may or may not be allowed to give out where John is working, I will anyway. John is uh, one of the big wigs over at Cuts. Super nice guy, does a fantastic job to bring value to the poker community 
and glad that he's uh, watching the stream along with us. Us. The start of the day, chip leader Dario Baroni waking up with a fairly decent ace here. Two and a half X sizing. We haven't seen that from him yet. This kind of sizing is what we would expect from Mikhail, uh, who busted in ninth place. We saw some 3x, 4x, 5x. He was really hard to read reporting, which made things very interesting for us. And it seemed like his unorthodox style of play was working out quite well for him. Until today's final table, that is. And then we have Andrea Agnoletto defending with his ace four. And not a flop either player really loves. Andrea though does have a gut shot to the wheel. Somehow has 30% equity, but I can't figure out how. Just really a four and a three are live. I guess there is a lot of chop, chopping involved in there as well. But I would expect Dario's equity to be a little bit higher. And it does continue. Perhaps if Andrea was in position, it would be an easier call to reevaluate on the turn. But does call here as well. He's hoping for that three. Maybe he doesn't understand that his four is live too, but this is an awful card for Andrea because it brings a third spade to the board and he doesn't have any spades in his hand. Dario does, however, but Dario is already ahead anyway. But you would expect this to go check check quite often. Unless Dario understands that his opponent was floating him with something like ace four. Dario Barone, not unused to being at final tables, was at a big one earlier this month here in Malta. One million. And betting it big. I mean, it's not that big, it just seems big. It's half the pot. Betting one million. All players are chip millionaires, though. And that was enough to get the job done. Dario Barone now back to near 10 million yeah. in chips. He began no, no, the day with 9.3 million and now has 9.4. He was a chip leader at the start, but it was, it's been pretty much all Andrea Liu okay. early on. Who was as high as 16 million, as high as 20 million actually, for about 40% of the chips. I'm trying to count his chips now. There's about 20 million there now. Cool. Maybe about 19. It's hard to tell. But is there really a big difference between 19 and 20 million at this point when you're the chip leader? Not too much. Us. And now we can see he has Us. about 19 million. Us. It's all the way around to Andrea here, but the Jack-10, it's either going to be a limp or a shove, I think. He has under 15 big blinds in his stack. Actually, blinds have gone up to 100,000, 250,000, so he has just 11 big blinds in his stack, plus the small blinds, so give or take 11, 12. Race all in does just jam it in his eye. And what is Dario Barone going to do here? He does have an ace in his hand. He should understand that Agnoletto can be jamming super wide here. However, ace four is usually going to put you in a coin flip situation against hands like 10-9, jack-10, king-queen. Even though you're ahead, it would be for a third of his stack. We'll get a very good idea about what Dario mindset is based on his action here but not making any quick decisions does indeed call folks 
And we have yet another all-in and call. So far, we have not seen too many doubles. We've seen mostly eliminations when this has happened. Will Andrea Agnoletto be able to stay alive, or will he be hitting the rail in sixth place for 31,590? We will find out right here, right now. Dario Barone still ahead on the 887 flop, but now it's a jack 10 or 9 that will put Andrea out in front. And it's a 7 of hearts on the turn. Now a 7 or 8 would give a chop as well. And it's a queen of clubs on the river. Dario Barone up to 12 million in chips. Meanwhile, Andrea Agnoletto, very good game to you. Out in sixth place for 31,590 euros. He's been smiling all tournament long, having a good time. Has a lot to be proud of, shaking hands with everybody at the table. I wish we could listen to his exit interview here on the stream, but you'll be able to listen to it later on Facebook. Fantastic uh, for the rest of the five players, so everybody laddered up nicely. So while Andrea will collect 31,590 euro, the final five have now locked up 41,100 euro with tonight's winner going home with 156,500 euro. And it's the first Italian that we've lost at the final table. So now we have four Italians at the final table and one Spanish player in Miguel Bolivar. And here's a look at their chip count. Still Andrea Lou with the lead with 19 million. Now Dara Barone, who began the day with the chip lead, is up to 12 million. We have Miguel Bolivar with 7.5. And then we also have Andrea Dominici and Giulio De Savo with slightly less chips. But it's anybody's game at this point, despite Andrea Lu having nearly 40% of the chips in play. Things can change fast at a final table. Grace. So now Francesco Ottone says, bell call. So I think that means good call. It turned out to be for sure. Table, so I won't be surprised if it eventually slows down now that the stacks are a bit effectively <laughs> deeper. If the action does slow down, I do recommend you head to the blog on thebattleofbalta.com because there will be other information shared by Arvid there about some of the side event winners. You can always head to the results tab as well to see that as well. There's some wonderful photos taken by our photographers uh, in the galleries tab, plus there's the photos that Arvid and I have been taking, snapshotting uh, as well. Neither of us are professional photographers, but I'd like to think we've done a good job with grabbing photos right. during coverage while players are in action. The photographers were quite busy with all the side events, so we were taking our own photos for the blog for the most part. We have Miguel here opening the cutoff for 500,000. And Dominici with the A7 will likely defend, if not more. It does look like he added another 250 to the stack, so it is indeed a call. Heads up. on the 2A2 flop. This isn't really a good flop for either player, but it's better for Andrea, obviously, with his ace high, but the cutoff can be much stronger. We see that Miguel has Queen Jack and is behind. And we'll be uh, putting Andrea to the test here with the better hand. thinking things over. It's much easier to call when you can see the cards. Oh. 
does indeed fold. So well played by Miguel there, continuing understanding that the big blinds range uh, does have some of that, but that he can easily get away from it if he's called. And then just slow things down, does take down a pot, and every pot is valuable, big or small at this point for everybody, except for maybe Andrea Liu, who just has so many chips that he can afford to lose a million or two here and there. I'm sure he wants to continue going in the other direction. I see Alessandra is tuned in. Hello, Alessandra. Hope all is well with you. Us. 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 Holds around to the Salvo here, who doesn't want to open the button with his weak king. Would have likely been three bet by Andrea if he did. Though we haven't really seen people three betting hands like Ace Five suited at the final table. Dominici looks like he's reaching for a raise, just deciding how much he wants to raise. Doesn't look like he's going to make it big. Although he keeps adding chips to what he's doing. It might be just a min raise if he pulled the chips back that were in front of him. 600. No, he left that 100K and just added to it. So it's a raise to 600,000. Andrea Liu defending with his baby suited cards. And a blind on blind battle. And both players grabbing a piece of this six ace king. Flop, Andrea Liu with bottom pair, Andrea Dominici with the top pair. Does continue for half a million. Oh, this may be a raise. It is just a call though. It looked like he reached for more than five chips, but uh, it was just five. And now this is the card that Dominici wanted to see. Improves to two pair. Andrea Liu is down to just two outs. And it looks like those two outs may be dead already because the check mark is already with Dominici. So maybe there were two sixes in other players' hands that I missed. That would be the only possibility for Dominici to already have that check mark. But either way, don't expect him to be going anywhere facing any aggression from Andrea Liu. And don't expect Andrea Liu to really be aggressive in this spot either. As we mentioned, he seems to know Dominici pretty well based on their interactions on previous days. He bets 850,000. Well, that's just one third of the pot. May keep Andrea Liu in the hand. Obviously, it would be an amazing situation for Dominici. I'd be curious to see what he does if a heart hits the river and Andrea Liu would bet big, but we'll never find out if that's the case because Andrea Liu does wisely lay down his hand and Dominici up to 7.6 million. I'm jealous of those coffees I see of the players drinking in the background. If anybody on the team is listening, this commentator would absolutely love a coffee or a non-British tea, meaning a tea with no milk, because putting milk in your tea should be against the law. No offense to my British friends. Then again, I don't even put milk in my coffee either. But I can drink it. I can drink coffee with milk, but not tea with milk. Yeah, we have Nick O'Hara there in the background behind the screen. He's been helping out with a lot of the technical stuff with the K Hold'em system they've been using throughout the event. A shout out to Nick. And Dario Barone opening up under the gun with Ace Jack. 
sure what Dominici is thinking about here. I guess just doing some timing stuff. Oh my, Bolivar here with the Queens. I would expect to see a 3-bet if he was much shorter in chips. I'd expect that 3-bet to be a jam and then probably Baroni deciding whether he wants to call with his ace-jack. But in this case, it should be a more standard sizing for the 3-bet of 2 million or less. Brace. Miguel Amigo Bolivar does indeed 3-bet to 1.4 million. It is enticing for Barone to just call here. But I won't be surprised if he folds. We haven't seen Bolivar get out of line. Even though we see his ace is live. Bolivar would be doing the same thing with ace-queen or ace-king that he's doing with the queens here. I don't think he'd be doing it with like a king-queen suited hand based on what we've seen so far. Does lay it down. Well played there by Barone. The open is standard. Despite uh, Bolivar trying to entice perhaps with the small three-bet sizing, it does not work. On the other hand, Bolivar likely is still happy to take some chips. There's a lot of flops, turns, and rivers that put queens in a rough spot, even though it's a strong hand pre-flop. What happens if it's a king 5-3 flop? You're going to have to see a turn, and then if you're facing action against you on the turn, you're not really sure where you stand with your queens, especially being out of position. Getting a bit short here, but 6-4 is not where he can make his move. We'll be in the big blind next, though, and get even shorter. Since they are featuring the big blind ante, as most tournaments are these days, which means he's going to have to put 250 into the pot before he gets cards as the ante for the table, and he's going to have to put another 250 in front of him for the big blind. But we'll see how that turns out next hand. We have Miguel opening for a min raise from the small blind with the queen jack. Dario may decide to defend his suit of cards. It's only a min raise. You can almost profitably play any two to a min raise from the small blind playing in position from the big blind. And this is a suited any two, so slightly better than a boring any two. And pretty good flop here for Miguel. Queen 6 5. Unfortunately for him, Dario did not hit a piece of this. Is not a super dry board with the two spades and that 5 6 connecting with each other. So I expect Miguel not to slow play his queen jack. Indeed, he does not. Bet's 550. You want to try to get some value from those speculative hands. And it's not the worst case to just take it down here like it happens. And Miguel Bolivar up to 10 million. So we have three players now above 10 million and Miguel Bolivar, Dario Barone and also Andrea Liu. I know Andrea Liu doesn't mind if I mispronounce his given name, but I'm gonna stick with Andrea most of the time. I practiced for about five minutes with him trying to pronounce uh, Junyu, and even though that sounds like what he was saying to me, apparently that's not very close. 
you could take the American out of America, which I've been out living in Europe for 20 years, but you can't take the American out of the American. Some, some names are just impossible for me to pronounce. More than acceptable open with the 6.5 suited when you're sitting on 18 million. Starting to put a little pressure on players. Let's see what Dario Barone will do here with the ace nine. The thing is, typically you would expect the chip leader to be opening a lot of pots, but we haven't seen Andrea Lu really do this with the hand like 6.5 suited just open. And I don't blame Barone for folding there, that ace nine, even though we see how far he's ahead and a three bet would have taken down the pot. We could see Andrea lose hand. He cannot. And if he could, obviously, there would be a very big problem there. But the Salo happy to defend here with the 10 9 off. He probably doesn't realize that he's actually ahead at this moment. And very interesting flop here, Jack 3-7. Nobody really hit a big piece of it, but we have DeSalvo with the top end of that gutter. An 8 gives him a straight, and we have Andrea Liu here with also a gutter for the 4 for a straight, but also a backdoor flush draw. and I expect Andrea Liu to be really but continuing on most flops. So we'll see if he gets Julio out of the way. It isn't the big bet. However, Julio is sitting on pretty much no chips. It'll be less than 10 big blinds if he folds. It's very hard for him to even call this small bet. I would love to rabbit hole this turn in river, but we're probably not gonna see it. might get interesting because I'm being encouraged by the organizers but to have instead of a coffee something else but I asked for a coffee and apparently an adult beverage is being delivered which is also fine it's almost like having coffee it'll keep me uh, keep me moving keep me lively keep me happy then again, I would be happy sitting in a closet somewhere, which I've done before at other events, without any drink service, without anything. As long as the final table is entertaining, I am happy. And so far, we've had quite some good poker being played by this uh, final table. And we have Telly here. Maybe we can get Telly into the no, but Telly has worked nonstop on this Battle of Malta. Oh, we have Telly joining us. Right, 500. Us. So welcome, Telly, to the stream. Thank you for joining us. We've had quite of an entertaining stream. We've had three eliminations, four eliminations already. It's been bang, 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 bang. Uh, two in the first 10 minutes of play, and then it slowed down a little bit, but it's been quite some good poker. And I want to thank you for the fantastic job that you did putting this all together. I know the players have appreciated their time here, and it can be evidenced by the almost 2,000 oh, runners we've had at the Battle of Malta main event. Uh, so congratulations to you on that. Like always, 
we had quite a nice number of players in most of the events, especially we in the high roller and the bounty tournament. And I, I just want to wish good luck to the players. We're looking uh, forward to see who the winner is from, from the remaining players. Uh, feels like uh, that it might be a very fast final table, actually. Uh, we already lost three players, but you never know. You never know. So good luck to the players from my side. And uh, Jason, in your professional uh, uh, experience, I will leave it to you to continue this amazing uh, uh, stream. Well, thank you, Telly, for joining us. Uh, Telly is here nonstop at Casino Malta, so it's not just this event he is working, but he's already beginning to plan the October Battle of Malta. So tell us a little bit about that. Is the guarantee going to be the same? Is it going to be a little bit different? It will be a million guarantee, not a half a million guarantee, the October event. Uh, actually, uh, the phone has not stopped during this event with a lot of players that not managed to make it. Uh, we had uh, issues with the hotels as well with this event. Everything was fully booked for from a month before. So uh, we already have a lot of bookings for October. Uh, one of the hotels is already fully booked. Uh, we have another three to fill. So it's going to be a big event again, once again. So we, we're very looking forward for October. So if players want to come, how should they uh, get in touch with you for the best hotel it, deals? Yes, it's uh, very easy from the website. Uh, if you go on our website, www.battleofmalta.com, very easy. Uh, there is my contact, there is Diane's contact who takes care of the accommodations. Uh, but even for, uh, on our Facebook page, there's a WhatsApp bat button. You can press on it, it will take you directly to my personal WhatsApp. So any information you can get, it's very easy to get the information. Uh, just ask and we will, we will guide you through how you want to get here. Very good. And of course, as players, as you normally do, you can also come to me and I'm happy to share you anything about the Battle of Malta. This is either my fourth or fifth Battle of Malta. I lose track over the years. The pandemic really confused everything. But I it's very different love the experience. Now, yes. now you, it's very different. Now you're on the front. You're part of the big, the, the, the one of the decision makers as well, coming from media side. So we do take your advice and we're very happy you're on board. Well, thank you, Telly. And I look forward to an exciting conclusion of this final table who, and see who will win this massive 156,000 euro top prize. Uh, all the players, as you can see, are having fun. We have four Italians and one Spanish guy left at the table. Uh, but these guys were even having fun at the end of yesterday, despite the big money on the line. And uh, yeah, congratulations to you, to Diane, to the entire team at Casino Malta, uh, the dealers, the coordinators, everybody that helped put this together. Uh, Jack and Cesare have been fantastic bringing some of the action in Italian as well. Uh, Gaetano on social media also, he's been on fire, which is the term. On we've fire. On fire, bomb gun boom. <laughs> But uh, yes, he's bringing his energy as well, uh, which we need because it's a long week for all of us here. So it's nice that we are all supportive of each other. Battle Patricia's of Malta. done a fantastic job too. Battle of Malta is always uh, good vibes, good spirit, positive thinking. We focus on what we do to do it better. And uh, having a nice atmosphere in this room is the best thing for me, the biggest satisfaction. Doing a week together, having laughs, uh, joking working as well where it's time to work focusing on our job but also in between sometimes you see me passing and making some jokes to keep the spirit up of everyone who's working very hard long hours not easy so you need the people who uh, like to have fun yes so exactly. that's what it is uh, it we is always have work. fun working here but it, it is hard work so you really should love this kind of work otherwise you're not gonna have that much fun but definitely but we love what we do and it doesn't matter if it's three hours or 18 hour day it's all the yeah. same to us <laughs> And excellent. Jason, I'm going to leave you. Continue with your job. Game looks a bit slow for now. I think uh, pocket aids there. But I'm not going to comment. I'm not, I don't want to get into the commenting no, stuff no, no, stage as well. That. It's good for me what I do. Thank you, Jason. Thank you and good luck for okay. today. That was the fantastic Telly. Uh, he helped organize this event. He was the brains behind uh, everything that you see marketing-wise for the Battle of Malta. Him along with uh, Diane really took charge of this event. Uh, have done a fantastic job all week, but it's not just this week that they've done a fantastic job. They spent months and months of planning, and as we've already mentioned, uh, they're already planning for the October event, making sure they have the key staff coming back as uh, 
as I mentioned, I will be back in October. I already have the dates on my calendar and absolutely looking forward to, uh, to the next Battle of Malta. But we're going to go back to the action. We didn't really have much happening here. This was a standard open by Andrea Dominici. And then we had a three bet with the Ochos and uh, a quick fold, maybe not so quick. And I'm not sure if there's a lot of background noise going on your end, but uh, I hear Jack uh, Bonora, uh, an Italian, on the microphone now. I think the players are on break in real time, and he is uh, doing his thing. He is a famous Italian basketball commentator. He does like to do uh, the Battle of Malta each year as well. And we'll have him in the booth later in the, uh, in the coverage where we can combine some Italian and English together. His English is fairly okay, uh, but his Italian is, uh, he could speak faster in Italian than I could even speak in English, and that is saying quite a lot. Loving these camera angles, bringing the action very close to us. And Andrea Liu, who has 40% of the chips in play, we expect him to be opening a lot of buttons, certainly with any ace. Price, 500. And does announce that raise. And it looks like uh, he'll just pick up that uh, 600,000 that went in the middle, now up to 21 million. So getting closer and closer to having half the chips in play. And I may have had my father just join in to watch. I see, uh, so shout out to my dad if you're watching back from New Jersey. I look forward to uh, seeing you and mom and my sister Lisa and the rest of the family uh, and some of my friends when I visit New Jersey in August for my annual pilgrimage with my wife and son. This year I'll try to spend a little bit longer than normal. That is the goal anyway. We'll be taking some time off when things are a little bit quieter in the poker world in August. Bus. And in general, we'll be taking it a little bit easier over the summer than you see me throughout the year. I've been at so many events this year, enjoying just about every single one of them, including Race. today's final table. I wonder. So Miguel Bolivar opening up with the Ace King suited. The lovely hand to have on the button where you should be opening fairly wide. So somebody may play back at you with a speculative hand, but unfortunately for him, Julio De Savo did not have anything in the big line. So just add 600,000 to his stack. And Julio getting shorter and shorter down to just 1.4 million in chips under six big blinds. We shall see if he can spin it up. We will likely find out soon enough because he doesn't have too much time left if he keeps folding hands. Now obviously he should not be playing that 7-deuce offsuit. He needs to get some cards he can play and then find the spot to put that 1.4 million into the middle. So my coffee turned out to be a different color. It's more of a yellowish color and it's not warm. But it is tasty. And here is Marcello, but Marcello is looking at his watch going tap, tap, tap. Marcello is going to join us, folks. So we have our amazing dealer coordinator, a good friend of mine, Marcello Caloro. And sorry if I'm mispronouncing either of your first name or last name, but we've been buddies for close to 10 years now. I've seen you grow, you've seen me grow, we've seen each other grow together. Usually apart, but together, we're always supportive of each other. So welcome, Marcello, how are you? Thank you, Jason, it was a really, really pleasure to be here with you. Thank you for your kind words. Yeah, it's really true, my respect you know, for you and the way that you both, you know, grew up actually in this business, you know. It makes an amazing bond between us everywhere we go, actually. Sorry for the delay, I promised Jason to cap, you know, to cap here earlier, but, you know, very last day, so many things to do, so. Yeah, and yeah, if we you got now. here earlier, when you were going to come, you would have seen some fireworks. There were two really? eliminations, bang, bang, like they right told off the me bat. So let me catch up. So what happened? Let yeah, me we're down to five players left. We had uh, Mikhail uh, 
the side that is King Nine suited is worthy jamming almost 20 big blinds, lost most of that, and then dusted off the rest. Oh, the rest of the eliminations were fairly standard in Victor Frida, uh, finishing in eighth, and then we had uh, Fabian Roli finish in seventh, and Andrea Agnuleto, who didn't hit the rail too much long ago, in sixth. And now we have the final five. We have Andrea Liu, uh, mm -hmm. four Italians, so you should be happy about really? that, and one player from Spain left, but Andrea That's Liu. That's good for my country, the same. <laughs> yes, your country. But you've done a fantastic job all week. Uh, Marcello, if you don't know, he manages uh, basically all the dealers. So he used to be a dealer himself. Sometimes he still is. Uh, <laughs> he does floor. He does TDing. And at a massive event here at the Battle of Malta, he's the dealer coordinator, which is a tremendous undertaking. But it seemed like everything was very well organized. I wasn't sitting too far away from you. Uh, <laughs> Marcello putting people in his place. He's a very nice guy, but business is business. Yeah, I mean, you know, Jason, you, every time you're actually close to me, especially in Battle of Malta, my desk and Jason's desk are actually like kind of connected. Yes. <laughs> so, my poor friend Jason needs to like actually support and hear <laughs> my, my loud Italian voice. But hold on a second. We have a Whoa. jam here from Giulio De Salva with the Queen 10. That's he's been card dead. This is the first opportunity he's had since he's gone under yes. 10 big blinds to do anything. Is anybody going to wake up with anything? We shall see in a second. Yes. So far, so good. De Salva would not be upset with a walk here at all. It would add change the stack from 1.3 to 1.9. Obviously, if uh, Andrea it, Lutz is going to call it the 6-5, it's a different story, or uh, yeah. Bolivar calling with the Jack-6, but I think he'll get a walk here. Well, he could give it a try, actually, you know? You know, we're, we're playing for elimination or a big step, huge step. I don't know how much it is this, the payout step at this point, but it should be quite, like, big, big deal, you know? And with 20 millions, you know, trying to call in 1.3, actually, you know, 1 on 10 of this stack, so... Jack six switched. I mean, uh, I don't know what to do in that case. I don't like Jack six bait, but yeah, well, it, it's different when you're in the big blind than it was for Lou, who is in the small blind. Like, also, Bibla like Einstein. Yes, so this yes. also. So he is a little bit priced in. He oh, does he called, make he the call. You see, you see. So you came. You have some excitement right away here. Mark. Yeah. Thank you for the welcoming. <laughs> So we have Julio De Salvo at risk of hitting the rail here, but he is ahead. We can see he's a 3-1 to one favorite to uh, take down this pot, stay alive, and double his stack. But anything can happen in this lovely game of poker. Just because you're ahead, there's still five cards yeah, to go. Yeah, doesn't mean anything. We know that just. And so far, so good for Julio here. A dry board. Too over card, honestly. I'm sure he would like to see a queen to know that he is uh, sure. against that check mark, but... <laughs> Best on ever. Ooh. The eight of clubs makes things interesting because now a 10 is no good Both for Julio, them, you know. but a jack would give now Julio a straight, so it kind of works out the same still. Julio is still far interesting ahead. Interesting turn, huh? Yes, very interesting. And they, well, we got the double up. We got a double up. A double up for Julio here. You can hear his rail clapping up the three million. Yeah, all the crowd, you know, support in the arena. I mean, now with 3.4, I'd say, the double up, less or more, maybe around 4 million. So like, everything is still open again. Now it's like proper fights. Yes, yes. He still has 12 big blinds, so he has a little bit of room, but he, he it's not that much room because I think that we're going to be on our break soon and then blinds will yeah. go up to 150,000, 300,000, then he's back to the same spot again. Mm -hmm. uh, but at least he got that hand through. Exactly. Um, That's the best moment actually to get double up, you know, just before the break, you know, so you proper get the mindset, you know, that you get to relax, restart, refresh, and keep going. Uh, we don't forget that now the first price pool is over 150k, so. Yeah, big deal, a big 600 price. buy in. And you can see the chip counts here on the screen. So Julio is still by far uh, the small stack, and Andrea Liu has double of that of everybody else. You can see he has 41% of the chips in place. So that's yeah. quite a nice advantage. But if he doubles up either of those uh, two players with 10 million in chips, then things flip around pretty quickly. Yeah, I mean, at this point, yes. But we can say that you know our chip leader actually is dominating the table. He has all the 40% of the chips in games, so between five players at this point of the tournament, it's uh, something. It is something for sure. And now Julio here, he just doubled up with the Queen-10. He got an end. Uh, opting to just min-raise, not opting to shove, and we have Andrea Liu pocket six. with the pocket sixes. Is he going to three-bet? Is he going to call? Time will tell. I'm used to back in the day when I'd be commentating oh, featured people, so it would be Marcello dealing, actually. Yeah, I, 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 I don't see it 
tournament, I think it's the first time that I always want to be like on the other side, you know. Every time you look at me, you know, and they say, whoa, Marcello, you know what? This time I finally got this opportunity, thanks to Jason, I guess. I dealt so many times the final table of Barcelona Malta and this, you know, I love final table. This time, as I told to you, Jason, before, you know, while we are waiting to see what the King Jack of Darius is going to be. Easy so to go three weights and the flop because Andrea also yeah, flatted in front of the yeah. with the sixes. Let's see. And Dario Barone here with the King Jack. Mm -hmm. Everybody with five cards. But now it's Barone improving to two pair on this 5-5 five, five King flop. Mm -hmm. We have uh, Julia with his ace still alive, backdoor flush draw, and maybe Andrea Liu thinks that his sixes That's are good at this point. Interesting spot, you know, because I think all of them, they could actually, you know, think to get advantage about that, you know. This king, of course, you know, Dario, which actually is from the big blind, so... His check is standard just because he's in the big course, blind, yeah. he's the last to act, but he's uh, obviously not going anywhere. Well, round but, the check was like... Yeah. Oh, well. <laughs> now Dario should understand that he's good. It's a question of yeah. whether he's going to try to get value here or on the river. Obviously, there's some rivers that hurt him, but it, in this case, it's really just the ace that hurts him, but he may think that there's other rivers that can hurt him. Yeah, you're right, Jason. It is possible, obviously, that Julio or Andrea Liu uh, would be uh, checking back yeah, for the yeah, king yeah. as well. He's trying to get some value over here. Makes sense. A little bet. Two blinds, and well, he's in fold, seven diamonds. And we have now people waking up in the USA, so not only did my father pop in briefly to the stream, we have Sherry uh, from Georgia uh, really? coming in, a fantastic uh, amateur photographer. I do love her photos. I think she could be a professional photographer. If she lived in Europe, I'd be hiring her for, uh, for events, <laughs> in fact. I almost uh, went to last year's WSOP and was going to use her as my photographer, but the company I was working with at the time was very disorganized with everything, wow. and I had yeah. to cancel the trip. Yeah. I think that was a great experience anyway, like, great, like, you know? I'll go back at some point. I, I really, I mean, I lived outside of Vegas uh, yeah. I, uh, about a couple of decades ago, so I've kind of, of had my so. full, like, I cannot go for the whole summer. I, I'd just be too miserable at the end. <laughs> uh, I love the events in uh, Europe. There's plenty still going on in the summer. But it looks like we have a break, Marcello. Here are the yeah. chip counts. We have Andrea Liu with the chip lead. We have uh, Julio De Salvo still with a short stack. It's going to be about eight big blinds when we return. But I want to thank you, Marcello, for joining thank in you, briefly. Thank you, for you and for everyone. I wish you, like, I will leave you with Jason, which one of the best ones. I, mean, I always like you, your voice, and everything. You keep attention the way. So I will come back to my duty. You know, like we are running like 24 hours without no sleep over here. Oh, God. <laughs> I, do I look fresh, don't I? You do look fresh, <laughs> actually. And you're not going to be around tomorrow for lunch, are you? Well, I'll try my best. Okay, <laughs> let, let's catch up then tomorrow. Let's get to that. Thank you, Jason. Okay, take Goodbye, care, Marcello. Everyone. Thank you. And guys, we will be back in 20 minutes when blinds will be 150,000, 300,000. Once again, this, was, this is Jason Glatzer. I was just joined by Marcello. Caloro, uh, the dealer coordinator here at Battle Malta, will have other guests throughout the coverage. Thank you very much and be back soon.
Signore e signori, buonasera a tutti, benvenuti al Battle of Malta, all'atto finale, questo fantastico tavolo televisivo. È un'occasione importante per andare a consacrare i trionfatori, coloro che hanno vinto il ticket per il Battle of Malta di ottobre. Al mio fianco c'è Patricia, splendida ancora woman di questa meravigliosa Kermes, e in questi giorni con lei abbiamo ricordato l'opportunità Eccolo qua il banner che abbiamo mostrato in questi giorni, Win Now. All'interno ci sono i biglietti perché praticamente vi è l'opportunità per gli amici che hanno scelto di seguirci sulla pagina Instagram del Battle of Malta di partecipare a un'estrazione e di vincere i ticket per il main event del Battle of Malta di ottobre da un milione di montepremi garantito. E adesso sarà lei a spiegare in inglese con il suo fascino, con il suo sorriso, con la sua meravigliosa voce perché è una sensazionale cantante, non dimentichiamolo mai, proprio le modalità per quanto riguarda questo eccezionale sorteggio e questa eccezionale opportunità. Prego. Thank you, Jack, for this uh, lovely triumph you gave, as always. And yes, we'll be pro we were promoting all week this wonderful raffle for you to win a ticket to Battle of Malta 2023 October edition. We're gonna get out of this box three lucky winners who is going to be winners of this raffle and get the ticket for Battle of Malta 2023 October edition 1 million guaranteed and I think we should just start e sarà proprio lei a effettuare l'estrazione prego put uh, your hand and uh, vedete mano perfetta pulita non ci sono biglietti e va a sorteggiare un operato ci vuole anche la sua mano perché non è facile il uh, tutto stretto per quanto riguarda l'estrazione. Andiamo a vedere quello che accade. Eccoci qua. Vince un ticket per il main event. Copro il numero di telefono per la privacy. <ride> Vince il ticket per il main event. Spero sia ancora in sala. Samuele Lopresti. Se è qui può festeggiare, se no ovviamente l'organizzazione ha ah, le indicazioni, abbiamo il numero di telefono, come detto poi l'abbiamo coperto, non che cambi la vita, abbiamo fatto di correttezza, verrà contattato e gli verrà detto hai vinto il ticket per il main di ottobre. Secondo estratto, signori. Eccoci qua, secondo estratto, lo mostriamo sempre a favore di camera, non c'è trucco, non c'è inganno. Oh! Ci siamo. Bene, cari signori, io so che qua, perché lo vedo là seduto, sapete che ha vinto il ticket per il main event di ottobre? Antonio Parlavecchio, che ha scelto di seguire il Battle of Malta su Instagram e si porta a casa il ticket. È un ottimo giocatore e il bello che è talmente distratto, no? ma vieni qua a festeggiare, Antonio. Vieni qua a festeggiare, hai fatto bene, certo, certo, non ve lo nego, lui fa parte dell'organizzazione, è un ottimo giocatore, poi magari si organizzerà per cedere il ticket, però ha scelto anche egli di seguire la pagina del Battle of Malta e porta a casa il risultato. No, adesso io gli devo chiedere a chi lo cede perché voglio dire, tu già da organizzatore hai vinto con questo Battle, adesso mi fai anche questo colpaccio, ti faccio anche l'intervista, vieni, vieni, vieni. Quindi Antonio. Che mi combini, eh? Bravo! Allora era già in preventivo che esistevano grandi possibilità che potessi vincere per la prima volta, già lo anticipo che sarà facilmente ceduto e a giorni da diremo il nome. Molto bene, quindi abbiamo satellite, ok? Quando, quando è andato con il prende ammasso a legnare in un circolo, tu che vinci questo ticket, complimenti, rimane organizzato però eh, è andata bene complimenti ad Antonio che festeggia questa estrazione ultimo estratto scopriamo di chi si tratta signori 
vince, lo ricordo, il ticket per il main event di ottobre, semplicemente seguendo la nostra pagina Instagram Battle of Atta Poker. The third one, il terzo, vediamo chi è. Ci siamo, allora, Nicola Ciravolo, se leggo bene, sale un applauso, non so se sia in sala o meno, se c'è, benissimo, se no, abbiamo, ribadisco il numero di telefono, questi sono i tre trionfatori, i tre ticket assegnati. Quindi una bellissima occasione, voi continuate a seguire la pagina Instagram del Battle of Malta perché ci sono tante informazioni, il tavolo finale è in diretta anche sulla pagina del Battle, un grande lavoro social da parte di Gaetano Vicedomini e di tutto lo staff che ha lavorato alacremente. Patrizia, grazie veramente, I want to say thank you to you for the great work that you did in these days. Uh, i think that there are three persons who need to say thank you to you, it's normal, ci sono tre persone che le devono dire grazie, noi assolutamente diciamo a Patrizia per averci incantato con la sua bellezza, con la sua bravura, una eccezionale, intanto chiamano già in diretta, i giocatori dicono hai vinto e arrivano già le telefonate, veramente eccezionale, veramente un grande lavoro anche di Patrizia. Patricia, thank you very much. It's been a pleasure to work with you. And uh, I would like that you say to all our fans uh, a great uh, appointment for the Battle of Malta, the main event in October. Yes, thank you, Jack. Uh, again, it was a pleasure to work with you as well. Congratulations to three lucky winners. They're going to play the one million guarantee in October, Battle of Malta. It was a great pleasure to stay with such a wonderful team. And yeah, I see you in October. Okay. Signori e signori, è stato un immenso piacere, abbiamo anche il collegamento in diretta. Entra Massimo Maiopino, mettiamolo in viva voce. Vai, allora puoi rilasciare al microfono in sala centrale la tua prima dichiarazione, vai. Grazie di tutto. Grazie di tutto, una di quelle frasi che rimangono, pensate, veramente emozionante però, gliel'abbiamo detto in diretta, è bellissimo, veramente in tempo reale una bellissima soddisfazione uno è a casa e scopre di avere vinto con l'estrazione il ticket per ottobre poi magari come c'è stata la fama di Chris Moneymaker che da un satellite online da 30 dollari ha vinto il ticket per le busop e poi ha vinto le busop magari con questa estrazione collegamento in diretta scopriamo che il nostro Nicola vince il prossimo Battle of Malta sarebbe qualcosa di sensazionale adesso vi lasciamo perché sta terminando la pausa qui al main event grazie veramente a tutti per questa bella iniziativa Patricia ci ha incantato è stato un onore essere con voi ma tenetevi pronti perché ottobre sarà Battle of Malta un milione garantito a presto So the seats are open. One open, two open. Uh, seat two? Yes. Okay. I just open. But seat over there? Uh, uh, it was eight. 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 Yes. Ah, okay. So it's only seat eight. Yes. Because I did only one. Okay. So still the same pass. Minus one. Yeah. Minus eight. Okay. Yeah. Yes, I can hear you very, very well. And you're eating something. Bon appetit. I feel like I'm hungry as well, but not yet. I'm not ready to eat yet. Oh, no, thank you.
still didn't drink my coffee, but... All right, many of them players, you are welcome to take your seat. No, I think people are going to drink the coffee, so I'm going to be... This, um, like we have three minutes on the clock, so you know, we the welcome to come back your seat. But the stress level is not going down, so <laughs> and I'll be like too active and the shaking. <laughs> no, but you know, I feel I'm not stressed, but I'm just uh, very, um, how to say, serious. No, I'm not serious. Okay, no, I'm not. Like. <laughs> No, I'm not. But no, it's fine. No, it's uh, much better than the first time. It's just like no, no. No, 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 I think no, 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 This is Jason Glatzer commentating the final table of the iconic 2023 Battle of Malta Spring Edition main event. There was more than 1 million euros in the prize pool. We are down to just five players. 
each of which have pocked up 41,100 euro with tonight's winner going home with 156,500 euro. And I have a guest here with me for at least a hand or two, but it is none other than our reporter, Arvid. So welcome, Arvid. Thank you very much for your hard work. Hello. Thanks for having me. What have you thought of the action so far today? Uh, I'm quite impressed. This is probably one of the best final tables I've seen in a long time, uh, like skill-wise from, from the players. Uh, I really like how, how, how they behave and how they play. Unfortunately, I think we lost the most interesting player in the first hand. Well, he lost on the second hand, but he, it was evident on the first hand after he lost 90% of his chips, uh, jamming that king nine suited. Uh, whoa, what happened here? We oh, got an all in. Into the action. We have a jam by Dario Barone with the queen eight, and uh, Julio uh, had just seven or eight big blinds in his hand, making an easy call with the a7. We could have showers right now, very first hand coming off the break. We could be down to four players immediately. And chances are we'll see Julio double, but his equity, as you can see, it's not. It's basically a coin flip at this point. And there's a lot of drama going on. I'm not sure if uh, there's a holdup for any particular reason. Now here we go. And so far, Julio is in good shape in double. His ace seven is still ahead on this king king three flop. The drama, the suspense, leading up to that two of hearts turn. A7 still in the lead. He just needs a fade, a queen, and he needs to stop it. Ace of hearts on the river. You can hear... There, there are some Julio fans around. There's a lot more Dario fans than Julio fans. So I don't know if they were screaming in excitement or disappointment, but uh, there was a lot of screaming going on there. But fairly standard how that played out. When I saw the jam, I forgot that the blinds initially went up to a 300k, so he was, it was basically effectively a seven big blind jam with queen eight and the small blind, which is fine. And the ace seven folded Julie. But we have Julio now not only staying alive, but having some breathing room. He has doubled up like right before the break once. So still only 15 big blinds. Is so this like a, a reshuffle stack or can you play poker with that now? You can play poker with that. You don't have to shove off the 15 big blind stack, especially when you're just five handed at a final table and all players understand ICM when it's an all pro table. It's not confirmed that these are all pros, but based on talking with a lot of them, they are considering poker to be their primary source of income, therefore they are professional players. We are also looking at a very young final table, right? Yeah, I wonder what the average age is here. I would definitely bring that up if I was at the final table. I assume there are players that are half your age there. Probably, but we'll, let's let's not get into my age. It's uh, I look like I'm about, what, 10? And uh, <laughs> let's, let's leave it at that, that I'm a little bit above 10. A little bit. Just a little bit. We're not going to say what multiplier to apply there, but there is a multiplier of at least three to five. But not more. Not more, no. Let's see if Dario opens the button. We just saw him lose a little bit of his stack there on the previous uh, small blind jam with that queen eight to Julio de Sava's uh, ace seven, which held. This is certainly openable from the button. It is suited gapper. Looks like he's going to get a walk with this, which is uh, means he gets a lot of those chips back he just lost just by taking the blinds. So yeah, with those huge blinds into his stack, this goes very quickly. So Arvid, how has your week been? Uh, you've been working crazy hours. Even last night, I left you all by yourself, and I thought it was going to be a quick finish. But then I see you last post at like close to two in the morning. Yeah, it was not as quick. Uh, the final table bowl lasted almost an hour. Um, Otherwise, the week has been fantastic. Great tournament, great atmosphere, uh, good players. Really love the Casino Malta. Um, in the hours have been very long, not only for us, also for the players. Because yes, we have a lot of players uh, that played multiple starting flights. Um, I think Dario Barone fired several bullets to get there where he is now. Um, 
But yeah, that's normal. That's poker, I guess. You, you have to uh, stay up very late and play it until late in the night. And same for the players, uh, people reporting. We also have to stay up very late, of course. Our hours as reporters are even longer, though, because we have to be here like an hour or two before, be prepared with intros, and then we're not done when the final cards are dealt either. Uh, so you've really been a trooper putting in all those hours. Um, I thought it was going to be uh, you once in a while needing some sleep, but it was actually me last night needing some sleep. So thank you very much uh, for allowing me to be well rested for today's stream. Thank you. I mean, that's, you always take over if, if someone is feeling a little bit down. That's, that's obvious. So now we have Andrea Dominici thinking about what to do with his ducks. Is he going to jam? Is he going to raise? Is he just going to call? All three options are viable on this deck size, actually. Playing it the safest. And Andrea Lou, it's Andrea versus Andrea here. Maybe you can pronounce his uh, given name better than I can. I, I can try, Junju, but I assume it's a Chinese name, and they, they are for us Europeans uh, or Americans very difficult to pronounce. But to his friends, he's known as Andrea, so that makes it much easier for us. Other than the fact that there happens to be multiple and Andreas. And we, we have a jam here. Interesting, because I thought maybe we would see a raise, and then I'd be curious what Dominici would do with his ducks. Now, he should be laying down his ducks here. He's either clipping or super far behind. We see in this case it's just a flip. But range-wise, it's not a call here. You don't want to call and roll in with ducks. No. But not on a final table, not when you're not the short stack for sure. Maybe if he was down to like 2.5 million and he played it that way, then he has to call them not off a 4.7 million stack. But would we have liked to shove from him with like 15 big blinds? The problem is he didn't have just 15, he had about 17 to start the hand. It's a little bit too much to shove, but I wouldn't have minded a shove there. Understood. Then we maybe would have seen some fireworks, because maybe then we would have seen Andrea Lu call with his A7 suited. Possibly, but I don't mind seeing some poker being played, and not only pre-flop all-ins. Yes, for sure. And right now we don't have the shove stacks uh, prevalent on this table. Players are deep thanks to the early eliminations. Obviously, we do have Giulio and Andrea Dominici with shorter stacks, but they don't have the chef. The blinds do provide a lot of pressure. Though. There's like 750k in the middle already before any more chips are put in. That's a very good point. And uh, basically, if you just take down the blinds and the ante, it's not the worst case scenario, especially for the short stacks. Now I might, we might see uh, Dominici shove. We don't know how he plays this kind of stack. It is 16 big blinds still. It looks like he's just going to do a standard raise and take it from there. I saw him play a lot yesterday and he very rarely open shoved even if he had a small stack. Everybody has their own styles which makes this game as great as it is. Even among professionals, I mean, you see even players like Dominic Nietzsche, and I bring him up a lot during streams just because I don't understand why he does what he does, but he's one of the most successful players in poker. Yet when he has like an 8-big blind, 12-big blind stack, you'll see him limping. Like, and I don't understand that, so I don't do it myself, uh, but he does it profitably. Uh, he has his reasons, obviously. I mean, he has that whole DTO program that he uh, that he sells. He obviously knows the optimal way that he feels he should play, and he does quite well with it. But what I tell people is, if you don't understand why you're doing something, maybe just stick to what you know and maybe learn why they're doing it before you do it. Uh, you can learn from watching the pros, uh, but it doesn't mean you should emulate them if you don't understand the strategy behind it. But that's what I love about this final table is I think that these players are all pros or semi-pros and everybody has their own little bit of a unique style. We can at least assume they all have an idea what they are doing when they are doing something and not just randomly moving chips around. But meanwhile, we have the sole Spaniard, the sole non-Italian at the table, Miguel Bolivar here, with a very pretty hand from the small blind. Is he going to raise? Is he going to limp? And then do something if he's raised. 
So not the biggest raise in the world from a small blind, but still a raise. And I don't know if Dario is going to want to continue along with the queen six. It's not that Miguel has been doing this before from the small blind. That doesn't mean he wouldn't choose to do it now, though. And queen six obviously doesn't look like a hand you want to defend with. The thing is, when you're in position, you don't have to necessarily just be defending with the cards you have. You can be outplaying your opponent fairly easily in position too, but Dario agrees with your assessment and dumps his queen six, recognizing that Miguel uh, is not going to be opening the small blinds like that light. What do you think of the graphics now that you see it with the big screen where I'm looking at it I now? Love it. That, that looks fantastic. Like the whole table is, is on fire. Fortunately, on not literally. On fire. But it looks very professional but, and, and lighthearted as well. Love it. You notice that the board is literally on fire. The board literally is, yes. <laughs> oh, we have aces here for Dominici. It's the second time someone has aces on this table. Dominici with the good poker face here. Sometimes it's hard to hide your excitement when you look at both cards and their aces. Something like peeks up in your eyes or in your facial expression, but not with Dominici here. However, an under the gun raise is stronger than a button raise, so unless somebody wakes up with something, expect to walk. But Dario Barone may not go anywhere from the small blind. We did just see him pull queen a to a raise, but this is ace 10 from the small blind. We might even see a three bet, we might see a fold, we might see a call, all three things are in play. Dominici has been a very aggressive player throughout the day. So I assume Dario is doing something, so he's not folding. Does just call. And let's see if Julio will defend off his small stack, will not. Would have been in a bit of trouble. Of course, we'll probably see a 9-9-7 flop, but normally he'd be in a bit of trouble. Ace is looking good on this Jack-Jack 6 board. He even has the Ace of Diamonds in case things get a little dicey there. But, but Dario should also feel good about his hand now with Ace high and a paired board. Yeah, I don't see him folding to a bet, but then again, Andrea keeping him in, and now this could be trouble for Dario, actually. He has two pair, that uh, 10 paired him up, but he has no idea that Andrea has, uh, that Dominici has those aces. He will definitely love this 10. It looks like he's going to reach for some chips here. That's 600. It's about one third of the pot. Is Dominici going to raise here, trying to get out those diamonds or this king, queen, queen, nine, nine, eight types of hands that could outdraw him? Or he is must he assume that, that his hand is, is still best and he's just trying to milk and make, make sure that he gets most chips from Dario. Cool. You can see his hands are shaking a little bit, in fact, and if players are paying attention to that, that's typically a sign of strength. Although players know that and they can fake it. Now this third diamond on the board, along with being an eight, means that those nine queens and those diamonds would have got there. Now Dominici is never really going to go anywhere, even to a shove, I don't think. But it may slow down Dario a little bit here. It might save him some chips. But we will see a bet here, I, I assume, from Dominici. He will try to get value from his aces now. Wow, that's quite a close-up there. Remind me that I have to like properly like baby face shave if next time I'm on a final table stream. Usually I'm not on final table streams, but just for cash games. We played a cash game stream together. That was fun about uh, what three years ago it was. Yes, right, right. I, th I think you won quite a lot of money there. I maybe did. 
maybe even against me in one hand. That wasn't meant as a needle. I honestly don't remember if I won a hand against you or not, but I remember winning in that stream. So we have a bet and a call. It was a very tiny bet, right? Yeah, it was a snap call. It was just 500. Sneaking in 900. Okay, so it wasn't uh, super small, not super big, but getting some extra value there and up to 8.2 million. Meanwhile, Daria Barone uh, still has some chips. He was the start of the day chip leader with about 9.4 million and now has 7.1. Okay. That's okay. still about 24 big blinds. It's plenty. But we are on a 45 minute clock now instead of one hour. That started when we were six handed. When we get down to three players, the clock even gets faster at 30 minutes. Yeah, so the action will uh, get more pacey. And I think this is my cue. I'm going to type up this hand and put it in our block so that the people that don't have access to the stream can actually read about the action here. That sounds like a plan, a man with a plan, but I want to thank you very much for Arvid, not only for joining us uh, in the stream, but for all your hard work all week long. I do hope I get to work with you again, uh, but I understand that uh, you may have other career plans in mind, so we will keep in touch. But uh, that being said, I'll, I'll have good memories of the 2023 Battle of Malta Spring Edition, and a lot of that's because of you. So thank you very much for your hard work this week. Thank you for having me. Thanks for being here, and we will certainly stay in touch. At the very least, I heard something about lunch tomorrow. So Yes, for sure. Looking forward to that, and um, I will try to get you Jack here, right? Thank you, thank you. So that was Arvid, our blogger, our reporter. I was reporting with him until today, and we have another guest about to join us, the legendary sports commentator from Italy, Jack Bonora. Jack is getting his headphones set. We may have some Italian mixed in with the streams. So, Hi. Hi, it's Jack. It's a pleasure to be here. <laughs> How are you, Jack? Fine, thanks, and I'm really happy, not only for the success of the Battle of Malta, but uh, to have uh, three players uh, on the last four, no? <laughs> From Italy. I think it's four at last yeah, five. Yeah, on last five, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's a good moment now because uh, we have uh, a Spanish uh, player and other four Italian players because uh, the Chinese uh, is uh, born in China, but he lived uh, a lot of years in Italy, now he lives in Rome, and now in Malta, but he lived in Rome, and so when I made an interview to him, he speak Italian perfectly with the accent of Rome. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, I heard him speaking Italian yesterday with uh, Andrea Dominici when they were at the same table. Yeah. They were having a good time, and now they're together at the final table, which is very nice as well. A but, great uh, player, Andrea Dominici is a great player from south of Italy. Uh, very good uh, to play poker. Just uh, two weeks ago he had the uh, title of study at the university. A good opportunity for him, for uh, his life. But uh, he's a good uh, poker player and uh, I think that uh, he could uh, have a good uh, career uh, like poker player. Very intelligent. Yesterday he had uh, an important hand when he played uh, with uh, a set of four and uh, the other player we just a jack put all in he said the snap call <laughs> okay and uh, you want the hand and uh, you arrive at seven million of chips so i remember this hand yeah, that was now, quite a big hand now he's here now he's here now he's here along with uh, the formidable dario barone who was just recently on a final table here yeah. in malta as well uh, it's quite a talented group we have a good quality of uh, players at this uh, final table that's when quite I made rare. The interview I want to give you some information uh, because I talked with the Italian player. The Chinese uh, won, uh, say, I have to say I, how much I won? Yes, you have to say more than one million of euros. Ah, <laughs> very nice. <laughs> very nice. Uh, the other are good players uh, with good results. Uh, it's a good uh, uh, table. It's not so easy uh, to find uh, so many good players in a final table. But Battle of Malta, I think, uh, can be a good exception. Yeah, and especially, I mean, even at Battle Malta, I wouldn't expect it because you have 2,000 entries in this event. So certainly somebody's yeah. going to get to the final table just by pure luck. Yeah. I mean, the only player that would describe that was uh, Mikhail, uh, who was the first player out, but his style was keeping players on the toes. So even though it was evident he wasn't a professional player, he, he played quite well. He did have a bit of a hiccup on the first hand of the final table, jamming that King-9 suited. 
with about 18, 19 big blinds and got his hand caught in the cookie jar. But I would have loved to have seen him gone deep too and mix it in with these guys that we know are professionals or semi-professionals. Yeah. Oh, I think that uh, the most important thing of this game is that uh, the not professional player can beat uh, the champion. And for this motive, we love poker. We yes. love poker since uh, 2003 when uh, Chris Moneymaker won tables up uh, playing uh, after an uh, online tournament. So you're, you're a part of the whole moneymaker effect. Money I was already effect. playing poker for it's 20 perfect. years at that point. I've been playing yeah. since I've been like able to hold the deck of cards. If my dad is listening, part of that is because of his home poker game. My dad doesn't play Hold'em. Maybe he does now, but back then we didn't even know what Hold'em was. It was just a dealer's choice game. And then the kids of that game, uh, you know, we were allowed to watch for like the first half hour, hour. We all get together like when we were like maybe nine or ten years old and began playing for pennies and just having fun, you know. Yeah, and yeah. yeah I think that uh, the good thing of uh, Battle of Mata is the structure. It's not so easy for a not professional player to arrive at the end of the tournament. But if it happened, it happened because uh, uh, there's uh, an opportunity for everyone. We have a lot of balance that you can spend in uh, these days. But now, also the not professional player in Italy is a good player. Maybe he played at the club two, we two days uh, in a week. Every week, tonight, he knows the games. By the way, he's not professional. Because to be a professional player in Italy, you have to understand that uh, you haven't uh, had a position with uh, the taxes. You uh, spend money when you pay the bahin, but if you win, maybe uh, someone comes to you and say, hey, uh, you have won one million, okay, but you forget that I spent <laughs> 600,000. And so, if uh, we haven't an opportunity to a professional position, it's normal that you can have professional players. Yes, yes. And I've heard actually that uh, I'm not allowed to play on these Italian uh, poker sites, but I've heard that the play is a little bit softer actually than some of the other networks because there's a lot of recreational players that just love poker uh, and are doing it for, let's say, entertainment value. And then you have guys like Dario Barone and Andrea Dominici and Andrea Lu and Giulio De Salvo, just to name the four that are at the final table, basically um, able to make an income. Uh, because it's so soft, where some of the other Italian players have moved out of Italy so they can play online with the international field. Yep. And then learning, you know what, I have to relearn a few things here that yeah. all of a sudden I was very good and now I'm being exploited. You know, it goes the other way around. But I think it would be the same for like a pro playing against an international field to go and adjust to the Italian field. It's going to be very difficult for them as well. Yeah, now we have a lot of premier who live in Malta. Andrea, I said, come from Rome and live in Malta, and now we play like professional player from in Malta. Uh, the level is totally changing this year. I remember then that when I began to play in 2005, uh, it was like a game. We look for uh, Swedish player from Norway, from Denmark, and say, hey, they are loose, they play in an unbelievable way, they are crazy. No. It was uh, our future. Yes, for, yes. For them is the present. For us uh, is the future. And now we begin to play uh, not only the champion in two or three years. Dario Minieri. Dario Minieri, 15 years okay, ago, 600. was a player of uh, uh, 223. Yeah, he was ahead of his time. He was like a... Magic Johnson. No? We yeah, talk, yeah. When we talk about basketball, Magic Johnson in the 80s was a player of 20 years later. So Dario Minieri was the same. Now we have, uh, and I said, I think that uh, we can talk about the poker too. Also, if uh, the the video is perfect, we can understand. We have Dario Barone with Ace uh, Jack and uh, and Miguel we'll and Mi up? Miguel Bolivar here with the Ducks. Uh, if, if Barone raised the button here, we'd probably see uh, Barone getting it out of the way. But now we will see a coin flip situation. We have to see what's happened uh, with uh, Andrea with the t-shirt of uh, Maserati, the car that I love more, much more, eh? That's your favorite? Yeah, for sure. Uh, 
But having a Maserati in Rome or in uh, Malta would be a disaster because they're so freaking low to the ground. Yeah. Uh, but yet I see people driving these Lamborghinis and Ferraris in, <laughs> in Malta. I said, if you want to drive that car, go somewhere else so you can actually yeah, enjoy but, it there. But I live in Bologna. It's uh, 40 miles from Maranello, who's the house of Ferrari. So, <laughs> But we did go three-way to the flop. The Ducks are somehow still ahead three-way, but he has no way of knowing that. And we have Dario here with the uh, Broadway gut shot. His ace and Jack are still alive. He probably has no idea his Jack is alive. And Eve and Dominici grabbed a minuscule piece of this with the three of spades, giving him a spade back door, but that's not really enough if there's any action pending. I love these graphics with the name and not with the surname of the players, no? Like yes. Yes. Friends to have the photo is very easy to see. Sometimes uh, they <laughs> write uh, in a small way, and it's terrible to understand what's happened uh, about the stack. Here you can understand everything, and we can see that uh, Miguel uh, bet for 850, and we will see what's happened. I think that Andrea uh, can be uh, in the hand now, but Dario with a 10. Can, uh, make a triple and uh, I think he will pay but uh, he's also in position so that yeah. makes a big difference yeah. in this hand where he may be folding that from let's say the big blind uh, a call ace uh, ace uh, for Dario definitely the card he wanted to see he would have preferred it to be a 10 but he should feel good, good about this <laughs> of course that was Miguel that opened so he has some ace queens ace kings king queens ace threes that are ahead of this ace jack maybe even some pocket pairs that hit a set but uh, that being said Dario should feel very comfortable that he's ahead especially if Miguel checks this that with the 10 uh, it would be perfect by the way with the ace against uh, two is uh, very good and I think that Miguel with uh, a pair of two Queen, King, and Ace. Mm. <laughs> I think he's a little bit scared. <laughs> But while we we're waiting, you mentioned Dario Minieri, and it was a pleasure to see him because, wow. as like you probably have seen him in Italy, but he's basically been secluded to Italy after being such an international superstar. Sure. Uh, online, he was like a player that I watched quite a lot, and him and Nick Schulman uh, and a few others just because of their hyper aggressive style that was uh, basically new back then, you know, being hyper aggressive. Uh, uh, I want to pay attention just one second because Miguel made an important bet. Uh, oh, wow, uh, yes. One near two, two million, eh? One million nine hundred. And uh, Dario, <laughs> I think that uh, he will play. I think so. It's not that easy of a decision, uh, though, because no, now he's raising the flop and the turn. Call. I think he will call. I don't think he could be happy about his spot, yeah, but he has yeah. to call. Yeah. However, if it jack comes and it gives him two pair, that's actually yeah. a scary card for him, even though we know he's ahead. And obviously, Reaver. Deuce is a disaster ace. for him. And now he should feel good. I mean, uh, of course, there's other ace combinations, but you know, with that ace is kind of blocking a lot of those combinations. So he, he should be thrilled at this point with that card. But is Miguel going to slow down uh, his aggression? Later I will talk about Dario Minieri, but uh, now we have to understand what's happened in this end. Uh, I have to say clearly that I'm a fan of Italian player. I'm here like <laughs> a journalist, but in this uh, moment I'm a really, really a fan of Italian players. It's only because I'm not at the final table, obviously, though, Jack. Otherwise, you'd yeah. be a fan of, like, pseudo-American, pseudo-Lithuanian uh, players as well. I don't really have a nationality so much at this point. Yes, from New Jersey. I grew up around a lot of Italian people and even yeah. played poker with uh, a lot growing up. But Italian-Americans are much different than, let's say, Italian-Italians, if oh. that makes sense. But I had some delicious lasagna and other Italian foods growing up. Uh, check, check. This and makes a lot of sense, yeah, actually. It's correct. I think it's correct because uh... Miguel understands that after the turn bet not to try again, and while Dario understands that maybe he's being trapped, uh, no point in uh, blowing up your stack if you actually got cooler I there. I agree because uh, uh, 30 million now for the Italian player Barone, and. Uh, said okay i have uh, three assets uh, okay if i win uh, the hand is uh, 
correct. Uh, if I lose, I don't spend uh, too much. And I think it's a good choice. About Dario Vinieri, what I, was, what I want to say, that uh, he's a good friend. I met him when he was just uh, oh, 23. Uh, he had the face like a baby, but now he's near 40 and he has the same face and the same body. It's unbelievable because uh, he never <laughs> became old. Yeah, it's like just somebody took like an air pump and yeah. just made him a little bit bigger. <laughs> yeah. And then he decided to do away with the scarf. He had this iconic AC Roma scarf he would always wear at every event and always looking like this cool, stylish Italian. Yeah. Some people took it that weren't Italian as like a sign of arrogance, but he, Dario has always been like a super nice guy, whether he's been oh. in the spotlight or not. I met him as a poker player back in 2009 and he said he even remembered meeting me and this was before I was in the industry before people knew me other than Wacky Jackson nobody knew me as Jason Glatzer back then and uh, meanwhile wait a second here because we have a jam by uh, Julio yeah, DeSaba oh no oh no and a snap call by Andrea Liu sure. an easy call by him and we could have Another elimination. Regardless, we're going to have one Italian player happy and another less happy. Yeah. A lot of fans. We have the crew outside. Okay. Ace 10. Jack Jack. A great fight. Are you, Italian Derby. Which, which player are you rooting for? You have no favorite here. 6 18. So far, those jacks are ahead by Andrea Lu. Julio De Sabo really on the ropes here. Needs an ace with the final two cards. There are some Broadway combinations. Not the card he wants to see. He needs an ace or only an ace. Otherwise, he goes out in fifth place. Five. five of clubs on the river. So well played by Julio De Sabo. You cannot blame him for shoving there with that ace 10. Just ran into a better hand. Will go out of fifth place for 41,100 euros, which is quite a significant jump from the 14,480 he came in guaranteed. And now the final four are guaranteed 53,800 euros. So nice payday for 600 euro. How can you say? It's all over, baby? <laughs> <laughs> it's all over, baby. Oh, I love it. At the end of the basketball match, I always listen. Because when I can see NBA, now we have the match. In this night, we have uh, Denver, Miami, and the Miami, Denver. Uh, and you know what I'm about to say, fuck Miami. Oh. <laughs> I don't mean to use bad language, but that's what I was joking with you the other night oh, when the game was for on. Me, for me, I, I love uh, Jokic and so Dever, by yeah, the way. Yeah, yeah. It's not a problem. Now, we have uh, Andrea with 23 million. He's the chip leader. He's a great... Uh, I think that is uh, the best winner at this table, Andrea. Eh? One more million. I don't think that the other player... No, I don't think. I'm sure that the other player never won... Uh, one million in their career. Maybe, I don't know. Because I've even won more than one million in my career, but maybe. it's all online. <laughs> I don't know with the Texas. You know, we're quiet, quiet grinders, you know. I know uh, that the United States are very serious. In Italy, not always. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but if you look at like my old Pocket Fives profile, which doesn't include all my scores, it's even like, you know, it's still there, but I've been playing online for so many years. And just because you win like over a million doesn't mean I definitely do not have one million in my bank account. You know, it's uh... <laughs> okay. Four players. Uh, yes, and we'll get one, Cesare in here soon. One hundred fifty-six thousand uh, euros for the winner. I'm going to ask the chat on Facebook because I'm going to take a quick break to get the wonderful Cesare Antonini, who's been doing a fantastic job for uh, Gilka News. Uh, reporting everything in Italian. They've even done streams with Jack where they're walking around, you know, at various parts of the day with the camera. There's one guy in a camera and then the two of them are on the side so they're not interrupting the players, talking about some of the actions in a very cool nice. sports-like stream. And I'd love to do a sports commentating with you once, but I know you owe him doing it in Italian, so it wouldn't be welcome. <laughs> But, oh, sometimes uh, I can say, oh, mamma mia, okay? Yeah, I can yes. try to talk uh, in my language when we had uh, a fight uh, with the Italian players, but uh, it's, a, it's a different way to talk. Uh, okay, I know that my English is not perfect, I know perfectly. By the way, it's funny because uh, 
It's like a joke. Uh, maybe some, we can talk with Cesare for half an hour in Italian because uh, maybe it's funny to listen to Italian commentator. But I know that you're making unbelievable work. I'm looking on Facebook and all the fans love uh, your comment uh, in uh, English. So I'm really happy to be here. Uh, I know that sometimes uh, uh, journalists can say, oh, I'm not English, I don't, I don't want to talk in English. But it's not a joke. I make mistakes. What a problem. Yeah, of course. I always have people from all different countries in the stream with me. It's, uh, I tell people not to worry. I even tell people that, aren't come, that have never done it before, don't worry. I'll give you your cues when to talk. I'll ask you questions. We'll make it fun. But you're an experienced commentator. You're more experienced than me, in fact, because you... You've done countless sports and poker matches, but we have some action here. Yeah, yeah we, we have, have a three, three bet by Andrea. Three million. A four bet of three million. This is the first time Great we've seen bet. a light Great four bet. Move. And it should work here, actually, but this is the first time we've seen this kind of move. It shows that Dario has a good read on the situation. That uh, The thing is, Andrea Liu hasn't three bet light either yet, so it is a very interesting uh, move. It's. It should work unless uh, Andrea, who is staring down Dario, gets a read, but he did not get a read. Well done there by Dario. Great move, great move. But I'm going I'm to get Cesare in here. So Cesare, come on over, come on over. <laughs> Cesare is saying one no, minute, apparently he's probably he's, writing he's up the last a, hand. The blog and after a few minutes he will come for sure. We will change without problem, uh, but... Uh, but I'm going to leave finished. you with Cesare. We'll have the dream Italian team together, <laughs> trying yeah. to do commentating in English and Italian. Yeah, yeah. So mix it up, you know, understand that a lot of the audience it's does understand pleasure. Italian, but not all of it does. I think that uh, we made a great uh, work with our team. We have two cameramen, uh, Patricia, she's wonderful. She's very, very good uh, to work uh, like journalist. Cesare is uh, the number one with Gioco News, the best newspaper of poker in Italy. And uh, I try to be the hunker man, and uh, we uh, were on air near the tables. Uh, we made uh, a great words, and it's a pleasure because uh, that's an European tournament, maybe a world Phase tournament, 600. but we have a lot of Italian players. So we can uh, split uh, sometimes and mix in other time. Yes. Now we have a nice end, and we you can talk about this uh, race with 4-4. Four, four. So we have Andrea once again being active. But it's a small pair, but it's standard open. And he did get a player with ducks to fold. I'm sure he would have liked those ducks in. But I don't think we're going to see Andrea not come along for the ride with this ace eight. It's either going to be a three bet and a call, with the call being the more obvious play. But maybe he just saw that uh, Andrea Lou folded to a four bet when he three bet, uh, maybe not recognizing that uh, Andrea Liu uh, has been pretty much opening when he has hands outside of that. Uh, but I think we're going to see just a call here. Because cool. even though the players aren't seeing the hands, they had a break recently. We know that their friends are watching the stream, probably giving some information to players on the break. That's fairly standard. They're not allowed to have phones on the table, but they are allowed to talk to friends on the break. So, so far, the fours are ahead, but they can't make Andrea that comfortable because this 956 more hits the range of a big blind. Uh, but I expect to see this check bet call because uh, Andrea does have that gut shot as well for the straight, does have an ace, uh, depending on the sizing, of course. Because it's funny because Andrea is Andrea Dominici. You knew is the name, the Chinese name of Andrea. Yeah, so I've been Andrea calling him Andrea because I can't pronounce Junyu very yeah. well. And he's 40. He has the look like a 30, but he's 40. <laughs> Well, I get that a lot too. I'm only like 20, but people say that I'm 10. Oh, I let's that add like uh, maybe 30 <laughs> years to those calculations, yeah. and you get the idea, though. Yeah. So okay. we have Dominici here leading out with a dunk bet. I'm rather surprised by this, but it's just because I don't dunk bet often. Players, uh, obviously, setting solvers know when to dunk bet and when not. So this is obviously something that he has studied, and it worked out quite well for him. We are watching a good poker, and the most important thing is to have this kind of structure. You are at the TV table, at the final table, and you can play poker. It's not always all in, all in, all in. No, it's not a lottery. You play poker. And it's important that because Battle of Malta, pay attention to the numbers of the tournament, but to the opportunity to play the best poker that you can play. Yeah, it's a very well-structured event. It, yeah. I mean, players have been playing sick hours. I mean, uh, 
there have been nights that have ended at like 3 a.m. Other nights, I think last night, ended around 1.30 a.m. And then they need to be back the next day, all fresh, ready to battle. But I'm curious if the Facebook chat, if you want to hear a pure Italian commentating for 15, 20 minutes, I will be getting Patricia Rimfire during that uh, time so I can have her join me in for when five you, or 10 minutes. Or want, if you want to uh, hear English and Italian from these guys, we'll go based off your comments. I assume that the Italians would want, prefer in just break, Italian. You can decide, it's not a problem. You are uh, the, the boss <laughs> of the commentary and uh, we are happy to help you and to joke with you. You are a friend, it's a pleasure to work with you. Uh, not only in this edition, but in past two, so you can decide and I think that uh, we have a good video and the people can understand uh, when we talk in English or can understand yes. when we talk in Italian, but the, the, the But we do have, uh, <laughs> we do have quite many Italians on the final table and although I can commentate for 36 well, hours straight, I do want well, to get the, the dream team together for sh even if it's just for 20 minutes. It's a good opportunity for us uh, who are Italian to talk a better English because this is our problem. In Italy, we don't talk so well in English, so we need to improve our language and we have a good opportunity. By the way, for me, it's a pleasure to talk with you in your language and after we can have half an hour with Cesar, it's a pleasure because I need, I know that you need to finish your beer and you need a little bit of break. Well, yeah, and it's hard coffee. to have to have this as <laughs> This was meant to be coffee. I asked coffee, for coffee okay. in the microphone, it, it but somehow like a beer arrived. It's coffee, you no. Know. <laughs> well, now we have King, uh, Queen 5 uh, on the flop, and Dario as the Queen, Andrea, pair of three. Fold. The pot is for Dario. 1 million, 200,000. Yeah, basically now each pre-flop pot, it's 750 going in the middle, and it's about to probably go up to being 1 million in the middle every pot when it goes up to 200, 400, because we're now on 45-minute blinds instead of the hour we started the day with. After one more player goes out, it's going to be a bit speedier because it'll be just 30-minute blinds. So I'm thinking we probably have about three more hours of final table coverage, which is great for the viewers, great for the players. They put in a long time. And the reason that happens is you get far more many hands in forehand, three-handed, two-handed per blind level than you do when now you're when playing I pay full attention, rank. Now, when attention about Facebook, about Italian players, what do they say? Hey, so I can talk oh, and, answer, and answer to them on air because I know that the, they love the way to comment and a lot of persons say, hey, come on, it's a great show. Oh, how many? Oh, a lot, a lot. A lot of players... Uh, Cesare, sure, our show. Ah, thank you, Cesare. Yeah, for sure. Who I call uh, Cesare because after a Julius Caesar. Say, he's a great commentary. We love it. Because I have to translate his Roma because ah, uh, thank you. we have a lot of fan, a lot of fan from uh, Italy. I almost didn't make it into the booth today. I don't know if you knew that, Jack, but I was pretty sick yesterday. I didn't have a voice at all, and I was very nervous. So I got uh, made sure I got a full night rest, took some medicine. And this morning I woke up and it was as if I wasn't sick. So I was uh, very happy about that. <laughs> it's funny when I listen. Okay, you you wrote, enjoyed the stream at the beginning. We have Gaetano Vicedomini, who is the social media responsible to say, let's go. Vamos, Giulio, from Alessandro Privitera. Vamos is Spanish, by the way. Yeah, I know that. It's normal to use. Go, Petto di Pollo. is uh, the breast of the chicken. <laughs> the breast of the chicken? Yeah, Petto di Pollo, breast of the chicken. And more, uh, come on, Giulio, come on, Giulio, we want to double up. Uh, come on, uh, always uh, a lot of friends from Dominici. Uh, someone want to listen to the interview, wonderful interview from Patricia. Ah, very well, good. Yeah, Giulio has a lot of fans, for sure. Uh, ciao, Salvo. Oh. What you have Okay. Uh, they love uh, some move of the players, they say great call, uh, great fold. Uh, uh, it's particular, anyone talk about the uh, technical way to play poker? Only fans, it's like uh, a match, you no? Know, to a sport moment, uh, it's very interesting. Yeah, we were gonna have like a party stream today, but neither of us were in like party mode, so now we're doing like serious sports commentating, uh, which is... Uh, what I like to do uh, in general. 
When, when I listen to uh, uh, commentary okay, in uh, English, uh, right. it's particular because uh, you joke a lot, uh, you That's smile, you talk, uh, you laugh, uh, and I love it. Uh, we don't uh, do the same thing in Italy, and I prefer your way to do it because uh, I oh, pay attention on to Dario with a uh, pair of jackets. Uh, uh, because uh, it's funny for all the people who don't know perfectly a sport. Yeah. To listen to uh, a show. And then it's important when you have, let's say, a 600 buy-in event that you're not doing a lot of, let's say, GTO kind of analysis. When I'm covering, let's say, a much bigger buy-in, then I'll have like a GTO kind of expert in with me. So Dario doesn't really get much from his jacks, but yeah. as I say, there's no good way to play jacks. So yeah, sure, four, it's three. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I fold it is normal. Uh, but the blinds just went up to 200, 400, so now it's 1 million in the pot every hand. And we do have a dealer change. The dealers have been fantastic, not just at the feature table where we haven't seen a single mistake, but throughout the main event. Um, I've very rarely seen mistakes. And when something happens, they call the floor, and the floor deals with things very professionally, very quickly. Yeah. Uh, very few problems. There was one problem with a, uh, a player on day one. D on the turbo flight, uh, they gave him a lot of warnings before they had to disqualify him, but they were very patient sure. with him too. So, Well, before you ask me something about Dario Minieri, uh, now we play a lot with Prestige, he's a partner of Battle of Malta, he's a wonderful club, but Diego Cineri was here, a great person, and Dario has changed a little bit, not only to way to play, maybe it's way to leave That's because good. Uh, when you are 23 you begin to win money beca became very easy you have a lot of fun you have a lot of true friends but a lot of false friends now you are like in a dream but sometimes can became a nightmare yeah i yeah. think uh, in now he has the good mentality to be a professional poker player because he's a better man he's a better guy he's a better man and uh, he can play. It's perfect poker, but with a different head. Yeah, and for now sure. It's but I have one question about Dario. So Dario was the first player to ever buy a Porsche uh, with his frequent player points on poker stores. I think he may have been the first super, supernova elite there. Yeah, so do we know what happened to this freaking Porsche? Because I kept mentioning I was supposed to have a nice interview with uh, Dario. We're going to do it another can you time. Me? Uh, but that was going to be question okay. number one. What the fuck happened to this Porsche? Does he still on? have it? <laughs> <laughs> I remember when he won the Porsche, uh, I, I know, it I was like a dream, you are an idol. All it's right. like, you know, the reality show, Big Brother. In three months you became uh, an idol. But you, you don't know if it uh, will be the same thing in three years. So it was like a Big Brother. You are a poker player, but you don't know how much uh, you are a good player or how much you have been lucky. And so, Everything has changed uh, in a few times. And, and I remember I wrote three books about poker. In one book, uh, I explain what's happened. In 2008, uh, what we had, Ledman brother, a lot of problems, was difficult to find the work. And you were a 20 years old guy who became to play poker and you became rich. Yeah. You say, hey, what's happened? But hold on a second here. Ooh, we have a yeah. jam here Let's for see. Let's 16 see. big blinds by Miguel here, the sole Spaniard at the table, Miguel Bolivar. Is Andrea Dominici going to pull the trigger with his ace jack? He has a little bit less. He would be at risk. Ooh, pay attention, Miguel. All in. All in. But what is Andrea going to do with his ace jack suited here? He would be calling off his entire stack. We know he's ahead. He should feel range wise he's ahead. If we see the blinds is correct with 200, 400, six, six million, million and 300 three. is correct to pay on all in. Yes. UTG is under a the gun is the cutoff. We are in four players, so it's the cutoff. Really. Yeah, yeah, it's totally. It, it's changed. fairly standard. Hmm. And it's if he gets a better ace to folds, then it's a dream situation. It's a great opportunity for him. For me, is an easy call, but I'm here on the chair. Yeah, that's what I was saying. We're here <laughs> on the with chair. With my money, not with his money. Do you play a lot of poker, though, Jack? Yeah, I play poker since uh, 2005. Uh, I won uh, uh, some tournaments live, some tournaments online. I'm a normal player. I'm not a champion. 
I think to be, uh, I think that I'm better to talk than to play. <laughs> maybe we can get a staff game going tonight. That would be fun. Let's see. Yeah, uh, yeah, for sure. Maybe when Cesare finally makes his Is way over player? there. Cesare. We are a, we are a good player. Uh, I played the, the I, specialist of a zap, a zap to a zap, uh, two hundred fifty euros. Uh, I was a good player, but uh, not a champion. And I like that Dominici is thinking things through. Well, it's a choice uh, who can decide, I don't want to say your life, but this choice uh, could represent uh, 150,000 euros. <laughs> Maybe in this moment, it, he thinks it's to his life. Well, it's just 22. He has a lot of time in front of him, by the way, you say, hey, what's happened? If I say call, maybe I buy an house. <laughs> <laughs> not in New York on the fifth straight. Eh? No, not with 150. <laughs> maybe a call. Call. It does call. call. Let's go. I'm going to leave this to you, Jack. Let's yeah, get for this sure. in Italian exciting. Asso e Jack contro Asso e Sei. Va bene, ve lo dico in italiano per una volta, non ci sono problemi. Lo faccio con immenso piacere. È una sfida Spagna-Italia. Miguel con Asso e Sei. Andrea Dominici con Asso e Jack Di Fiori. Parte nettamente in avanti. 72% contro 28. È la grande occasione per il giocatore azzurro di eliminare uno spagnolo, di prendere letteralmente il volo. Forza, ragazzi. Forza Italia. Ci siamo. Andrea Dominici. È lì. Guarda, sa di avere fatto la scelta giusta. La faccia di Miguel si contrae. Sogna un 6. Che non c'è, che non c'è. Attenzione perché con una donna si chiude anche la scala. Forza Andrea, la grande opportunità per l'Azzurro. 8, K, 10. Il turn è un 9. Si chiude la scala anche con il 7. Ma non vogliamo vedere dei 6. River 5! Come on, baby! Ci siamo! Prende il volo Andrea Dominici con Asso e Jack. Il grande colpo dell'Azzurro. Partiva davanti, chiude davanti. Ci regaliamo veramente un sogno. Sale l'applauso, stringe i pugni, sorride il suo omonimo Andrea. Il nome riportato in cinese ma vive da sempre in Italia e quindi parla perfettamente italiano. È italiano, non dimentichiamolo mai, questo è l'elemento che dobbiamo evidenziare. Perde l'ottimo giocatore spagnolo, era un Olinda 6 milioni e 3. Sale Andrea Dominici, le mani sulla faccia e dice accidenti signori, forse sto sognando. Maybe I'm dreaming. And should I have the English translation? So the ace jack held, it was a nice flop uh, for ace jack for sure against a6, and then it held the rest of the way. I think Miguel Bolivar still has some yep. chips left. It says 225,000 on the screen, but it looks like he has a little bit more than that. It, oh, that's being taken away too. So the 225 is about right. He has a chip and a chair. Let's see if he can make the comeback or if he is going to hit the rail in fourth place. Either way, it's been a nice run for Miguel, but maybe he can have a Cinderella story in here. Yeah. Otherwise, we're going to have an Italian final three. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Andrea uh, is always the chip leader with 20 million. Dario, 16 million. Andrea, 13 million. Miguel, 20 25 <laughs> 225 yeah 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 no 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 225 for the first one you can see uh, there's a, is a, the good thing that i love of this tournament that you don't need to make a deal because uh, is uh, correct 156 uh, 150 uh, 110 uh, is uh, no, 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 there's not a big difference right. sometimes yeah. in the tournament they want to no give a lot to the winner because yeah, it's a good no. spot no, 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 but it's no, not no, correct no. and after they stop the tournament okay. all the times for the deal yeah and typically you can notice that if, if first place is more than 13 times uh, ninth place then it's very heavy and encouraging deal making but when it's 10 to 13 is the happy zone uh, between first and ninth uh, from a multiplier perspective now we have to pay attention because it's Olin Miguel but Dario has uh, a Pair of nine. Price. And it's an east and cold. 
Andrea Ace Four. It's interesting because oh. if Dario just slipped, we'd probably yeah, but, see a player uh, out. But I like that. Dario but you want to fault? I think that he will fold because Dario tried to isolate himself. He didn't say just oh. call. Oh, Andrea said call with Ace Four. And Andrea Lou with the uh, cards as well. Yeah. But yeah. I think he'll get out of the way here. But Dario didn't play a soft uh, poker. He said, okay, he said, Dolin, I say raise because with fair of name, I want to take the ball. It's yeah, the thing yeah. that I want to do. But Andre is not scared. Say, hey, I have an ace. I can uh, uh, win the pot. Uh, nice. I want to play. Oh and my. the other Andrea Did you hear <laughs> can that? do the same thing. Oh! He raised. Ooh, three bet. Wow, to 2.2 million. Now, uh, this they are is, not uh, playing. Uh, for the player out. They are playing no. to take the pot. They're playing for that side pot. And Dario now great, great may actually move. get great out of the way move. with this nines because of the ICM yeah. implications with the short stack of 225. Yeah. This is a interesting it's a squeeze. move here. It's a squeeze. It's the perfect squeeze. And the <laughs> Ooh, Dario Barone. Not afraid. Fold. Does have a strong hand with the nines. Fold of Andrea. And now it's unbelievable descent. I was very surprised to see that three bet. He was likely trying to push the other two players out of the way and gain that side pot automatically while still knowing he's in good shape against an any two because the big blind was already all in before the cards were dealt. Miguel, though, still has that queen live. The seven, not so much unless there's two of them coming out. He's the only one with red cards too, so if we Good. see four diamonds, four hearts, he stays alive. We could see that equity-wise, he's not yeah, yeah. horrible. I mean, obviously, yeah. he's not favored to win this hand, I but does have some hope to uh, quadruple up, not just uh, double up at this point. We are ready for the flop. Okay. Seven, Sorry. five, two. So Miguel connecting There's a with seven the seven. for Miguel, but we have yeah. a pair of nine for Dario. And Andrea with King-10 mm, is not in the best condition. He has uh, to overcard, okay, but uh, we have the 10 or King uh, on the table, and now we have to see how he will play. But it's a big bet, too. Two million. This could actually wind up saving Miguel, because even though Dario has an overpair, He's Andrea's a line flop. looks very he's a strong. Flop for Dario, but now I think that he's a little bit scared to playing against the monster hand. And he has scared because Miguel is short. Yes. So <laughs> Andrea played a great poker with a great brain. <laughs> but he said call, eh, Dario? Dario has to be concerned that his overpair isn't enough based on the three bet by Andrea and the continuation bet, which wasn't a small one on the uh, on the flop. It looks like a blank card on the turn, maybe a six of spades, but we'll find out in a second. But that does look like a six of spades over there. Yep. Okay, so that doesn't this. really change too much. Now, is Andrea going to continue repping that he has something like aces, pocket sevens, kings, queens, you know, stuff he would be raising, three betting with three pop, maybe not with pocket sevens would he be doing that. So it's just really these over pairs in the nine. He's not concerned about the fact that the six could have completed a straight of some sort. But he does check. Now is Dario going to try to just take down the side pot right now? Does indeed bet because we saw Andrea fold. It's for 2.5 million. So Miguel needs a queen or a seven on the river, or it is good game to Miguel in an all Italian final three. Okay, the river. Italia contro Spagna, signori. Coppia di nove contro Donna sette. C'è un sette. Ma potrebbe essere il colpo grosso per rivedere i tre. Forza Dario! Non vogliamo vedere donne, non vogliamo vedere sette. River! Bingo! It's all over, baby! It's all over. Very well played by Miguel. Uh, it is Miguel Bolivar out in fourth place for 53,800 euros. And it's an all Italian podium right now with the final three guaranteed 69,890 euros. We have Dario Barone, we have Andrea Lu, and we have Andrea uh, 
the other Andrea as well, and Andrea Dominici, all competing for that 156,500 euro top prize. And here's Dario, a look at the 20 two counts. million. Andrea Giulio, 60 million. Andrea Dominici, 12 million. Y para todos los amigos españoles, lo sentimos, amigos fanáticos, el juego para Miguel se acabó y hasta luego. Ah, so you speak Spanish very fluently as well. That was impressive. Yeah, I can understand not, that, not? actually, because I understand some Spanish. If you want a joke, we joke till the end, no? Hasta la vista, baby. Hasta la vista, baby. But he played quite well throughout. He should be very proud that he turned the 600 euro buy into 53,800 euro. I don't blame the shove with that A6, he just ran into a better race and then the rest was history after that. He had some hope with the betting going back and forth, if Lou was able to pull that trigger on the turn, maybe things would have turned out differently. It wasn't a king yeah. of ten on the river, right? So yeah. Yeah. he yeah. would have quadrupled up, but that wasn't what happened. And here we see that the final three are fairly close together. I mean, obviously Dario has nearly double that of Andrea, but uh, right now uh, you can see that they're all close together and Dario uh, with the chip lead for the first time at the final table. And it looks like we're taking a short break, so thank yeah, you for joining, Jack. So. I think we'll resume with you and Cesare, but if he's not there, then I'll grab Patricia. Uh, but I think for at least the beginning of the final three, people would love to hear the two of you together. As much as I would love to continue along, I'm going to do what's best for the fans. And it uh, looks like Cesare, though, is being interviewed at the moment. So assuming he is done with his interview, we'll get him in the booth with, uh, with Jack here. If not, uh, we'll keep Jack around for a little while and get Patricia in. <laughs> See you later.
Hello? Yeah, we're playing only for the big blind, okay? Yeah, big blind only. All right. Good. Oh, no, just the big blind. Just, just the big blind here. Uh, four, four. Big blind area. Quattro one. Wait, wait. No, no, no. Only it's big just blind. big blinds. Oh, sorry. Yeah. It's my turn. Yeah. We have a race of the turn. Dario. Let's go Holland. Let's go Holland. I'm a simple. Race. Nine hundred twenty-five. Yeah. Pass. And call. Heads up. Check. As a backdoor flush draw, all that Dario Baroni has is a different backdoor flush draw. Expect this very often to go check bet fold, but Andrea may decide to check it back as well. What I don't expect to see is if there is a bet that Dario will call, but it looks like a bet will be happening maybe to 725. Bet. Might be 825, we'll see in a second. It is 925. 925. Pass. Easy fold by Dario and Andrea picking up some chips. So we have Dario Barone who got up from his chair we have so Andrea Dominici collecting the pot okay. and Andrea Liu with a big stack and, uh, himself uh, right next to him yeah. as well. Yeah. I would love it if uh, we had yeah, the yeah, Italian the commentators in for the final three. Small so let's see if we can get them in at some point. As I'm sure the Italian poker community would love to hear from Jack and Cesare. Cesare is busy also blogging, so I don't think we'll be able to get them in together for too long, but it would be great. And here they come, folks. We're having the dream team from Italy coming. We have Jack coming back. We have Cesare joining him. Expect a nice mix of Italian and English. I'm going to leave them to do their thing for about 20 minutes and watch along the sidelines but Jack is back thank you Jack for joining us and thank you Cesare as well you've done a fantastic job all week and here is your time there are three Italians left and I'm going to hand over the headset right now to Cesare thank you very much thank you very much to Jason thank you to Jason okay, very thank Jason. you to Jason eccoci qua it's a pleasure to be here with eccoci you qua. It's a pleasure for me. I, I'm glad, I'm glad. I'm very glad. Col cavolo che parliamo in inglese. Adesso parliamo in dialetto, no? E il dialetto adesso parliamo in romano. Intanto abbiamo un giocatore testaccese, testaccinese possiamo dire, grande X Gambit 83. Dai, un piccolo flash così per i ragazzi che sono qui. Intanto definizione bellissima del monitor. Complimenti alla regia. Bellissime immagini. Eh, intanto la prima cosa che dobbiamo evidenziare poi se ci sarà una mano interessante come sempre in televisione Cesare uh, know, it's, it's è just, che gli italiani yeah, stanno incantando sì decisamente fighters, devo dire che ieri nella fase 3 left tra l'altro Liu Junior ha, ha provato ad eliminare in tutti i modi Andrea Agnoletto no no, no eliminare insomma alla fine comunque si è giocato il colpo 10 jack asso dama e l'avversario sempre con la coppia ha raddoppiato fino a sopravvivere e praticamente alla fine se l'è portata al final table per poi eh, Andrea ha dovuto lasciare insomma 
il, uh, il suo sit insomma eccoli qua no scusate Andrea Agnoletto ha uh, lasciato il suo sit Andrea Dominici in gioco Andrea Agnoletto quindi eh, ha soffrito dei due raddoppi Dario Barone intanto ha migliorato Jack e dico questo è il quarto posto che aveva eh, centrato partendo da Chip Leader al torneo giocato qui a Malta è un altro casino dieci giorni fa e ieri ci siamo parlati un attimo ha detto dice arrivato al tavolo finale Chip Leader vediamo cosa succede perché in Italia si dice chi entra da, da Papa esce da Cardinale è vero e adesso c'è Liu Junyu che sembra il primo papa, ecco, papa cinese forse della storia, vediamo un po' <ride> se riesce a strappare questo prestigioso dito del Battle of Malta che però per adesso sarà azzurro. Beh, si è sempre parlato di un papa nero, no? Adesso l'ipotesi è che di un papa cinese, quello che sappiamo di eh, Junyu, il nome italiano è Andrea, è che vive a Roma da sempre praticamente, parla italiano con accento romano e devo dire che è un ottimo giocatore gli ho anche chiesto Cesare quanto hai vinto in carriera e fa lo devo proprio dire più di un milione online ovviamente online sì 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 beh è un giocatore molto importante eh, quindi insomma credo che eh, sarà sarà difficile adesso buttarlo fuori però è un giocatore che si gioca il colpo che gioca molto bene tecnicamente ma che le mette, le mette adesso è vero che ha spillato Jack Jack ho visto nella mano precedente quando ha eliminato l'avversario eh, ha visto anche carta però abbiamo visto che l'ha messa con 10 Jack l'ha messa senza grossi problemi gioca molto bene in ICM eh, è piaciuto molto ieri è uscito alla distanza davvero in maniera molto importante e già che ci siamo facciamo un piccolo messaggio a Darietto Minieri che davvero ha giocato ieri un torneo meraviglioso si è visto scoppiare gli assi da Maxim Schengar, giocatore maltese eh, che poi eh, si è suicidato 15 left 16 left e credo che le chips che ha preso a Darietto meritavano più rispetto e forse dovevano reggere un po' di più perché eh, Dario è stato molto sportivo, ha detto complimenti all'avversario, ha giocato molto bene era uno dei migliori al tavolo è stata una bestia nera per lui perché ha perso 5 colpi e ne ha vinto solo uno tra i 5 quello dell'eliminazione chiaramente da manovra a soasso eh, bilaterale al flop e K subito al turn per l'eliminazione di Dario Minieri che comunque ieri ha giocato un bellissimo torneo dei 1 meraviglioso, incantevole eh, dei 2 insomma si è qualificato leggermente sotto Eve, ci salutiamo intanto sono gli amici di Domus, eh, Domus Bet che ci riprendono e noi esatto. Tanto stiamo facendo interventi di in video. C'è credo un'altra piccola pausa? Qualcosa Beh, del genere? Io non genere. mi meraviglierei se i giocatori parlassero anche di un piccolo deal. Di un aggiustamento, è possibile Aggiungo ci sia. Perché lo evidenziamo prima con Jason, è stato spalmato molto bene il Monte Cristo. Però sai, quando ballano magari eh, 30-40 euro, il livello in termini di chip, lo vedete anche dall'immagine, è abbastanza simile. Il livello qualitativo non so dirti eh, se sia abbastanza simile, però di sicuro parliamo di tre ottimi giocatori, ecco questo lo vogliamo dire, tre ottimi giocatori sì, poi mi puoi dire uno è più forte, forse, ma non c'è il dilettante corto e il campione deep, no. ci sono tre ottimi giocatori con un numero di chip sì. Tra l'altro forse quello che ha più, più leak, più inesperienza ce l'ha detto ieri Andrea Dominici da Mazing Bet, perché è praticamente un PVR, diciamo un appunto gioco che si è qualificato e ha giocato insomma, comunque è un giocatore che gioca, che si è fatto vedere molto bene, eccolo qua la situazione, 21 milioni Dario Baroni, 14 Andrea Dominici e Junio Liu 14 milioni, bel equilibrio, eh, Bui 200-400 mila, vedete anche insomma Uh, giocano sui 33-34x i giocatori uh, che sono secondi rispetto a Dario Barone che ha 21 milioni e intanto Dario Barone la notizia è che ah, si è messo in tasca almeno più del triplo di quello che ha vinto 10 giorni fa quindi per lui è un ottimo risultato ha schivato il quarto posto quindi ha già migliorato il suo record forse aveva un po' di terrore eh, in base su questo ma un giocatore davvero molto preparato ha giocato 6 ballet eh, questo bisogna dire no 5 ballet anche ha speso 3 mila euro però, eh. li ha ammortizzati bene <ride> e è stato veramente ci siamo visti spesso questi giorni perché ripeto quando poi segui un giocatore fino alla fine 
eh, ci entri in empatia per forza a buona voglia e, e lui è stato davvero molto molto eh, molto sincero voleva qualificarsi e soffriva anche un paio di balle è cresciuto in un giorno ma è poi è uscito malamente e per, fino a qualificarsi se non sbaglio al day 1D e poi andare al day 2 e fare questa bella di prano perfetto e molto semplicemente eh, rivediamo il chip count che mostra Dario 21 milioni Andrea 14 e Yuniu che poi è Andrea capiamoci bene con 14 milioni anche egli quindi questo ci serve per avere un'immagine anche che ci permetta di capire Cesare tecnicamente cosa accadrà perché questo dialogo che stanno facendo i giocatori è chiaramente finalizzato a trovare un equilibrio peraltro vedete anche la percentuale io credo che si possa anche andare a ICM se eventualmente si vuole andare a spalmare il Monte Premio sì, alla fine sarebbe il giusto riconoscimento per Dario Barone e due premi equivalenti per il secondo e per il terzo lasciando chiaramente qualcosa da giocare perché le regole di tutti i casinò più o meno ci sono alcune regole un po' strane alcune case da gioco anche per sistemi di pagamento che magari devono utilizzare, delle soglie de... però sono tutti aggirabili in maniera tranquilla spesso e volentieri di lì non si possono chiudere ma per questo motivo c'è un applauso Credo che i giocatori siano dai la stretta di mano di sì. salomonica per dire ok ci dividiamo i soldi, sono 156.000, 109.000, 69000, proviamo a ipotizzare che non so, avranno spalmato 100.000 a tutti, rimane fuori un 56.000, potrebbe essere, no forse un 40.000 rimane fuori da giocare magari in percentuale oppure dare qualcosa in più al primo. Chiaramente dopo ci informeremo, chiaramente Jason è in sala quindi si informerà e capiremo quello che quello succederà. Va avanti la pausa, non so se eh, vogliamo continuare questo, sì, ma va bene, tanto noi questa di chiacchierata. Ne possiamo sempre fare anche perché è molto semplice celebrare il successo di questo Battle of Malta. Eh, Quell'applauso che avete sentito che va a sancire. Eh, ovviamente l'elemento fondamentale che è l'accordo tra i giocatori eh, sì. però credo sì, che debba via. mantenere inalterato una cosa al di là del fatto che appunto si giocheranno una cifra che il torneo è stato meraviglioso che si gioca per un trofeo prestigioso e che indipendentemente dal deal questi giocatori debbano continuare a giocare il loro miglior poker per vincere io invoco questa cosa perché dopo ore di analisi, giorni di analisi tecniche, abbiamo visto purtroppo dei tornei in cui a fronte di un deal o link con 7-2 col con 9-3. No, io credo che questo sport, perché sport lo consideriamo e sport è, debba essere onorato, al di là dell'accordo economico che è sacrosanto, credo che debba essere assolutamente onorato da un bel po'. Ah sì, abbiamo visto insomma anche tanti zap in cui era esagerato giocare, alcuni che era giusto giocare e altri come dici tu che è stato ingiusto non giocare in maniera corretta, poi i soldi sono i loro, però per lo spettacolo c'è anche una logica che quando ti siedi a un tavolo finale tu ricevi della visibilità come giocatore che può tornarti utile come sponsor, può tornarti utile qualsiasi cosa e anche come prestigio personale e poi comunque hai un pubblico che ti segue, che ti tifa e devi come un giocatore che sta giocando una partita di qualsiasi sport devi onorare la maglia mettiamola così anche se la squadra è quella personale giochiamo tutti all'individuale credo che tra questi player non ci sarà questo grosso problema poi magari eh, le, le butteranno a caso questo non, non possiamo dirlo però non Dario Barone ritiro. esatto Dario Barone Ama, eh, X Gambit soprattutto anche Andrea Dominici mi sembrano dei buoni giocatori uh, vogliamo dire insomma che forse avremmo visto bene anche Roberto Caprio a questo tavolo finale che ieri con un titolo eh, l'ho ribattezzato Caprio Espiatorio perché in realtà è stato lui il Caprio Espiatorio per andare tutti al tavolo finale in realtà non era il Caprio Espiatorio ma era Roberto Caprio che eh, era salito molto bene gli aveva tirato Amid Khalil un um, israeliano che, era, che aveva spaccato il torneo in un certo momento poi in, su un board con due tro mancati a River proprio per provare a prendere il piatto è andato l'in e ha trovato il, il call con asso asso 
dell'avversario facilissimo trovando appunto la un pot da 3 milioni andando a 4 milioni peccato davvero per Roberto Caprio mentre Michel Bucciaslivi secondo me ieri doveva uscire in un paio di occasioni c'è stata anche una decisione abbastanza eh, discussa con eh, il giocatore che aveva dichiarato l'in poi in realtà era più una, una domanda fraintesa da alcuni giocatori poi lo stesso Andrea Domenici ha detto guardate in quella mano avevo aperto per eh, non, con una mano un average un range scusate eh, medio e quindi quando l'olin è stato ritirato sostanzialmente è stata una buona, buona scelta per me vediamo un po' di questa fase 3 left poi magari rientrerà eh, Jason con te anzi con Patricia Rinfire certo. credo che sarà non la vedrete in tutta la sua bellezza però la, la potrete ascoltare in tutta la in una voce che a, a parimenti è meravigliosa per cui peccato non abbia potuto cantare l'ottimo l'ottimo repertorio no? perché c'è stato un vento che, 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 ha, che ha sopraffatto tutti quelli che volano fare festa tra parentesi ci sono tanti commenti di incoraggiamento per i giocatori c'è anche qualcuno che mi dice change the work Change the work, ho detto, sì, di cambiare no, no, the world, the work, il lavoro. Il lavoro proprio? <ride> sì, sono... sì, evidentemente non l'ha convinto il mio inglese e poi mi ha contestato, se non sbaglio, la parola ballet, inteso come proiettile, che volendo mi pare che ballet sia proprio ballet. Eh? Eh, ballet è <ride> utilizzatissimo <ride> in, esatto, uh, da però... tutti noi blogger, giornalisti, come per indicare ogni buy-in che viene speso per eh, dai uno. Quindi non, non capiamo qual è la critica, ma insomma, vabbè, accettiamo. Però guarda, quello che voglio dire, al di là di tutto, ed è una premessa che io ho fatto, non ci sono dubbi, abbiamo scelto di giocare in questo modo, no? nel senso che eh, Patricia, che parla un inglese migliore del mio, è slovena, eh, io, come penso sappiate, sono italianissimo, idem Cesare, Jason è eh, americano, quindi mh, abbiamo scelto di parlare per come sappiamo parlare, mai mi sono presentato come un madrelingua, sono stato al gioco, spero di avere eh, dato un po' la no, carica agli italiani, molto di aver fatto una simpatica. Ero, ero all'ascolto per bloggare le ultime mani, adesso aggiorniamo sul battle matta ufficiale sì. del gruppo, ecco il premio intanto, è lì, è lì. i due premi molto belli, tra l'altro nuovi, tra l'altro nuovissimi, però io credo che avete fatto un'ottima interazione con Gesù, è stato molto divertente come come momento e vabbè ma sai ma alla guarda, fine no ma lo dico sorridendo non lo è sai che a fare gli allenatori fare i commentatori <ride> al tavolo è la cosa vabbè, più vabbè, immediata quando Telli che ci danno anche intanto le indicazioni per il prossimo inserimento con Jason intanto la mano la seguiamo perché c'è un raise sì, a 800.000 con Don Elice, Andrea Asso e 6 quindi vediamo da piccolo che cosa succede Andrea Asso e 6 off Dario donne 10 off e sul raise 800.000 effettua un re-raise bella giocata di Dominici sì. donne 7 per Juniu che folderà e credo che anche Dario sarà molto in difficoltà su questa bella tribet secondo me molto sensata intanto siamo anche sulle storie Instagram di per forza. Cesare Antonini che è praticamente Almeno... come essere taggati dalla Ferragni è quasi, un implemento siamo lì. dei followers clamoroso. siamo lì siamo, lì. siamo allora quasi lì a questo punto mi perdonerete ma visto che abbiamo scelto di giocare la storia su Instagram della diretta la propongo anche io eh beh ti pareva che ti mancava e posso resistere guarda ma beh 3 milioni e 6 1 milione e 6 all in, in flat cuffia, e vado subito oh my god my god dama 10 per Dario Barone con asso 6 di Andrea Dominici, 19 milioni a 13 milioni, vediamo cosa decide Doppia la small blind, pescato, donne 10. Primo, a parlare, primo a parlare Andrea Dominici, potrebbe tranquillamente Beh, se va a cibettare adesso non è una passeggiata perché trova una doppia coppia, eh sì. le tempeste arrivano ecco qua subito la bettata credo un altri 800-900 mila una size non proprio lunghissima vediamo un po' se eh, credo 900 mila proprio sì 
900.000 le sedi Omega chiaramente adesso commenteremo fino alle zap poi uh, si tornerà il padrone di casa per questa diretta che è Jason Glazer insieme ai suoi ospiti siamo stati anche noi ospiti della, del suo streaming asso di picche mamma mia mamma mia che brutta carta quella al turn per Andrea pensa sia bella per la sua cibetta aver pescato questo asso e invece c'è la brutta sorpresa vediamo adesso come se eh, saranno delle giocate conservative quindi che consentono a Andrea di uscire oppure se eh, sarà convintissimo e se questo eventuale deal possa influire magari nella sua scelta di giocare in maniera molto, molto larga a piatto a 5 milioni e 9 intanto eh? Sì, e lui a, 13, a 12 milioni dietro eh, milioni arriva passi. con un bel bombardamento 5, 1, 1 e mezzo, 2 milioni, 2 milioni 100, 2 milioni e 100, 2 milioni e 2, 2, milioni e 2. Beh, Fondamentalmente betta meno di mezzo piatto eh. Fa effetto vedere la pila ma in realtà su un piatto di 5, 9, 2, 2 non è una follia sì, sì. Vediamo come la gestisce, si limita a collare Quindi per Andrea sono buoni i 6 e anche i 3 che darebbero una doppia coppia più alta e annullerebbero la doppia donna e 10 assolutamente sì andiamo a vedere il river col perfetto e comodissimo per Dario Barone 9 eh? brutta notizia 9 di fiori brutta notizia per Andrea non chiude nulla l'unica combo che potrebbe spaventare Dario potrebbe essere un K jack o asso X come asso dama e anche asso 10 ma un 10 e una dama ce l'ha anche Dario Barone due sono a terra per cui ha diverse carte, diversi blocker e quindi la possibilità davvero di andare sul velluto è ancora una badilata pazzesca super Eastern call, call. Uh, super call snap call, non e... ci ha pensato un attimo Dario Barone Beh, è, ovvio, è ovvio, e si porta a casa il piatto Dario Barone super si accorcia pot. pesantemente Andrea Dominici pesantemente super pot scende a 9 milioni e 9 sono praticamente meno di 20 bui no, più di un, po', un po' più di 20 bui ecco dicevo sul fatto di fare questo commento particolare che abbiamo scelto no? miscelando le voci di giocare un po' insieme proprio quando l'organizzatore Telli Bartolo che parla italiano molto bene ma è ovviamente madrelingua oltre che maltese, inglese perché ben sapete che questa è un'ex colonia inglese mi ha detto guarda è una cosa simpatica la possiamo fare ci sta poi logicamente se uno dice ho bisogno di uno che parli inglese e bilingue dico ragazzi non sono io è inutile che ci giriamo attorno eh. non dobbiamo prenderci in giro eh, le cose sono evidenti però spero che vi sia piaciuto abbiamo scherzato insieme e, e rimaniamo io di Bologna e lui di Narni intanto Jason è pronto a rientrare quando vuole essere operativo noi siamo solo felici di sì, sì. cedere il testimone andiamo avanti fino alle zappe dello stack pazzesco adesso di Dario Barone che riprende il comando dopo aver dominato il final table alla partenza essere sceso un po' aver vissuto un incubo di ripetere la deep run a metà adesso orientativamente se c'è stato questo aggiustamento ha già raggiunto il suo obiettivo adesso è il titolo però quello che serve e sicuramente si vuole conquistare questo titolo ricordo anche che in un torneo seguito recentemente hanno un giocatore ha perso in un side 800 euro per rincorrere proprio il trofeo che c'era che era un disegno artistico di un, di un importante disegnatore e, e ha rinunciato a 800 euro di deal per vincere e poi ha perso le zap quindi pensate quanto è importante il, il premio per tanti giocatori come quello che va a surrogare sempre quello che dice Jack che tra l'altro condivido intanto donna 10 per Andrea sì. Jack e 9 per Dario attenzione al flop che recita totalmente 9 di fiori, 2 di quadri asso di quadri quindi Dario Barone ha trovato il 9 e come prima ha trovato quella doppia donna 10 e il problema non è solo la fortuna sulla tribettata di trovare donna 10 e fare doppia e che esca anche l'asso al turno che ti permette di capitalizzare determinante poi si sentiva molto forte Dominici e... 
chiaramente la, la, la palla l'ha presa lui in mano essendo di small blind ha bettato tutte le strade ancora call adesso di Dario Barone con questo 9 anche questo back draw di flash diamond vediamo il turn asso di fiori un altro asso di fiori che dà, apre un progetto sia di fiori che di quadri ma i due non hanno questo nelle loro corde ognuno dei due chiaramente dovrà pensare a qual è il range dell'avversario escludere le mani che possono essere che possono battere l'uno l'altro check check in questo free card 4 di picche a river che una carta bianchissima per tutti e due check e mi sa che gira le carte indicando il check no ancora no Andrea forse vuole provare a rubare il piatto 4 milioni e mezzo è rimasto un piatto da 4 milioni check ovviamente non aveva senso mucca direttamente Andrea Dominici jack 9 va bene è entrato ormai guardate un po' è risceso clamorosamente ancora 4 milioni adesso 10 bui ripartiva con uno stack di almeno il doppio vediamo però Andrea ieri si è ripreso diverse volte spe specie contro Bucciasvili e poi è riuscito a rientrare in partita fino ad arrivare terzo per cui per lui è una bellissima impresa però adesso si fa veramente scura veramente una sfida fantastica tra parentesi voglio ricordare che abbiamo anche proposto con Patricia una lotteria molto bella per tutti coloro che hanno scelto di seguire la pagina Instagram Battle of Malta vi è stata l'opportunità di partecipare a un'estrazione con tre ticket per il prossimo Battle di ottobre da un milione di Montepremi garantito l'invito che faccio a tutti voi indipendentemente dalla possibilità di vincere i ticket in questione che è sfumata proprio nel corso di questo evento perché tre lo hanno già vinto e di seguire comunque la pagina Instagram perché veramente avrete tantissime informazioni e magari opportunità intanto c'è Uniu con Asso e Sendio perciò tantissimo la pagina Instagram eh? sono attenzione Dario Barone K10 sono molto contento perché poi che danno vicidomini mi ha chiesto uh, tanti consigli tante cose lui è un grandissimo professionista del mondo social chiaramente si affacciava al poker quindi ha trovato in noi ottime risorse sono contento davvero di aver fatto questo bel attenzione Cappadama mi sa che mandiamo tutto mi sa Ma che c'è una sensazione di mandare tutto chiaramente 9 bui call. e call. call si va signori beh io non può che non mettere asso 7 per Uniu italianissimo ve lo ricordo K donna per Andrea Dominici è un 60-40 62-38 sì. e siamo pronti per vedere le prime tre carte ecco il flop subito un asso subito turn 10 attenzione con i jack si chiuderebbe una scala per Dominici solo i jack, solo i jack per Andrea. non c'è il jack player out signori se ne va siamo alle Andrea zap. Dominici abbracciando sportivamente gli avversari un meraviglioso torneo per lui veramente complimenti a questo giovane bravissimo simpatico di talento gli auguriamo veramente il meglio ma adesso è heads up noi cediamo la il testimone la a Jason per il commento in inglese e sarà una sfida tutta da gustare Dario 32 milioni Uniu 18 milioni una sfida che vi racconterà Jason Glaster si parte 2 a 1 2 a 1 per Dario tenervi compagnia buon Ciao divertimento grazie Batman. Jason grazie Jason some break okay how do you know how long is the break you know guys no but the actually it's good to be here c3 yes we move on to the chat right we continue to use this box and that box right 
Posso togliere il microfono forte? Cioè non, non torno qua. Vabbè, ma gli è chi l'atrice pure. Ma gli è chi l'atrice. Vabbè, non me lo tolgo, non ci sono mai prima che era. Comunque cambio è lì 45 minuti. So, yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> but I have to open the deck. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry. No, no, sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs>
Eh, mi queda. Sorry, Florben. Miki, nella regia mi ha detto che l'ha messo a posto, il mazzo. Ha detto, digli Miki. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much, you are so kind. <laughs> okay, I call you after, okay? <laughs>
We are down to heads up action at the 2023 Spring Edition Battle of Malta main event from an original field of 1,992 entries. We are heads up right now between Dario Barone and Andrea Lu. Each player has locked up 101,500 euros with tonight's winner. Going home with 55,000 euros more with the top prize slated to be 156,500 euros. And right away with Dario Barone having nearly a two to one chip advantage, waking up with the fish hooks on the button. First hand of heads up play. And racing to one million from the button. Andrea Lu may decide to find, and indeed he does with the suited eight six. So already some action during the first hand of heads up action. And not the flop you want to see if you're Dario with the jack seven, ace and a king come on that flop, but it didn't help Andrea Lu push ahead. If Andrea Lu decides to float here, he will be able to take it down later, but he has no way of knowing how scary of an aboard this is for Dario. And the first heads up pot goes to Dario Barone, who began the day with the chip lead. It got coughed over to uh, Andrea Liu. Uh, Liu held the lead for quite some time until uh, the fourth place elimination, after which time he had the lead and hasn't looked back since. But after Miguel Bolivar hit the rail in fourth place, it was an all Italian final three. And then you witness with Jack and Cesare, Commentating an Italian, Andrea Dominici, hitting the rail in third place. They have quite some play left, actually, but the blinds are now 30 minutes in length. So I don't expect a marathon heads-up match like we witnessed in 2019 that I also commentated when Sergei Glisi came back from really just crumbs to defeat the formidable, the Viking, Steven Van Zedelhoff. And what was uh, a massive uh, Battle of Malta with uh, more than 4,000 entries. This one was also pretty big. It had a 500,000 euro guarantee and the prize pool reached over 1 million. And interesting here, Dario raising it up to 3 million from 3 million. the big bind. So Dario looks like he's going to show some aggression during heads up play. Aggressive poker is good poker as long as you know why you're being aggressive. Blindless aggression can be costly though. Looks like Dario is going to open the button. He should be opening most buttons, in fact, as should Andrea Liu. But we'll be just limping. Check. And Andrea more than happy to check it back with this 10-7. And Barone pairs up on this deuce nine six rainbow flop, but Andrea its cards are both live, as would an eight for a straight. And it's a min bet by Dario. Let's see if uh, Andrea check calls. Indeed, he does. The check on the turn does not help either player. And Barone betting his third pair for 1.2 million, and this likely will get the job done. Unless Andrea has a lead or has a plan. Barring a read or a plan, I expect a fold, and it is indeed a fold.
So, so far it's been all Dario Barone heads up. No big pots quite yet, but you could see his chip stack is growing and growing while Andrea's loose stack is getting smaller and smaller. So both players with a jack in this slump pot, but Dario's jack is a little bit better with the A kicker. And it's the A kicker that connects with the ace deuce, eight deuce seven rainbow flop. Does go check check. I would expect Dario to be betting the turn after it was checked back to him on the flop. And depending on how big we may see Andrea call with his gut shot, but it doesn't look like he'll call this sizing. It's nearly a pot size bet. It is a pot size bet. Andrea double checking his cards and does indeed give up. And we're going to have a special guest joining us for a little while, at least for a hand or two or three. But we have the fantastic host of the Battle of Malta joining us, Patricia Rimfire. Welcome, Patricia, to the stream. Hello, hello. I came to say hi You've done to my favorite commentator. Aww. Yeah, Jason, what's happening? It's been a fantastic final table. Lots right? of talent uh, here, a very talented heads up. If I had to say who I thought were going to be the two best players, it would be these two at this final table. And here they are battling yeah. it out for the title. But they've each locked up 101,500 euro, yeah. 55,000 more to the winner, 156,500. So it's been quite an exciting day. Uh, how Very has your exciting. day been? Yes, so good. So far, so good. Uh, I've been also very much invested in this final table very diverse one as well different players from different uh, countries so with different types of uh, skills and strategies I would say for sure but then when we got down to final three it was an all Italian <laughs> affair so the Italians took yeah. care of all the international players yeah that's true but I'm gonna hop into the action real quick here okay. Patricia because we have a uh, Lip by Dario from the button, and then uh, Andrea Liu raising it to 1.3 million with the king queen. And this flop does not help either player, but it will be Andrea repping those aces, and he is reaching for some chips, and likely a bet will take down the pot. He is ahead, but he'll be happy to take down the pot here, being that he has no ace in his hand. And indeed, we do have a bet. And I think this is going to be a fold. So I want to ask you a few more questions, Patricia. But I think you're going to have to run pretty soon. I have to really run. And I'll be back, Jason. OK, take, take care, care, Patricia. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Patricia is in high demand. She's been conducting interviews. And apparently, a player that she wants to interview just walked by the comms booth as she joins us. So it was a quick visit by Patricia Rimfire. She can't multitask do an interview and be in the booth at the same time, as amazing as she is. Maybe with a new technology, maybe something like ChatGPT can figure out how to have Patricia in two places at one time. I'll have to ask ChatGPT that question later. I've been having way too much fun with uh, this program, thanks to Arvid. I do not agree with it some of the time, though. They told me that Snoopy does not know how to play poker, which highly disappointed me, because I've seen Snoopy play poker. He may not have a poker face, but he knows what he's doing. Anyway, we have a limp pot here. Nobody with any premiums, but we have Dario connecting with this 10 on the Jack-10 deuce board. And Andrea Luz is going to be the one reaching for chips, so after it's checked over to him from the button, looking to take away a pot. I don't think it'll work this time. At least not on the flop. 600. It's a bet of 600 for half the pot. 
Pepperoni is not going anywhere. Close. Quickly calls. The nine of spades gives that check mark to Barone, but it's still a scary card for him. The seven eights, queen eights, king queen completed a straight plus is now two flush draws on the board. Neither of which we know that Andrea Lu has, and it's a king of spades on the river. Now, if Barone checks again, now he's going to turn his hand. That This is not necessarily for value, although maybe it is because it's quite small. I believe it's more of a blocker bet. But Andrea Lu can easily raise off a small bet if he wants and take down the pot if he recognizes it. And it sounds like that's exactly what he's going to do. Raise one. Very impressive because those flushes got there. The queen would be betting an ace queen, 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 you know, a queen eight would have already been there. But like a queen, like a deuce kind of hand, a queen jack kind of hand got there as well. And it is a raise in one, but it does call, sniffs it out. And Andrea is not going to be happy to see how light he was called down, how he was sniffed out there. But well played there by Dario, who now has nearly a three to one chip advantage, just a few hands into heads up action. This may be over quicker than I was thinking if momentum continues to be all Dario. But we have Super Mario, I would say right now it's Super Dario. And we have the first and second place trophy yes. up there. And look how gorgeous that winner's trophy is with the wings and everything. Yeah. And we have Dario Barone here with the queens. So he's had jacks and queens heads up. It's been all Dario all day heads up. Of course, we haven't been doing it for a day, and the blinds also just went up to quarter million, half million. And sneaky, sneaky here by Barone, just uh, limping from the button. And it's Andrea connecting with bottom pair here, still behind the queens by Barone. So a min bet by Barone, and Andrea check calls that bad boy. And the five of hearts on the turn, that's actually a good card for Barone, because if he was scared of the ace, it does give him that queen high flush draw. We know he's good. He probably feels he's okay, but now he is checking back just in case. And that's not the card he wanted to see on the river, because now if Andrea had a six, he completed the straight, he'll be happy to see it go check, check. And yet another pop by Dario Barone. So far, the cards have not been on Andrea's lose side. He did try to make a move two hands ago that didn't work out for him, but his stack is getting lower and lower and is now down to a little more than 20 big blinds. Looks like we're gonna have another limp pot. Oh no, we're probably not, because Dario here with the big slick will likely be jacking this up. Even out of position, I mean, you have ace king. Shouldn't be just checking back here, even to disguise it. It was fine, he limped the queens from the button only because he could be raised, etc., etc., and it does disguise it. And he would have played in position, does raise to 1.7, Andrea with a quick fold. And I don't think Andrea has won a pot during heads up action quite yet. It looks like both players have a small bind and up in front of them. Are we getting a new deck? No, we are not. Okay, 
Andrea now is told he is in the big blind, quickly getting those chips in. And back-to-back -back big slick. I mean, Dario, it's been about 10 hands. He's had jacks, he's had queens, and now he's had big slick twice in a row. Does he ever not get a hand? I mean, he's been playing fantastically, so I'm not saying it from that regard, but he's certainly getting the cards heads up. And when you have that and the chip lead, good things usually happen. And Dario opening the button. Andrea calling with the 9-7. Everything fairly standard so far and heads up. And Andrea finally getting something here. He has a lovely hand with this 9-7. Top pair, open-ended straight draw. But it does go check, check. A blank three of hearts on the turn. I would expect Andrea to lead out now. He was probably hoping Dario would have let out on the flop. And Andrea thinking about what sizing he wants to use, it seems. I don't think he's thinking about whether to check or bet. I think the bet was already decided. And it is a bet of half the pot of 1.3 million. And Dario calling. I mean, he has six outs, not really priced in, but if he's putting uh, his opponent on nothing, it's fine. <laughs> and a blank deuce on the river, check mark over to Andrea. Thinking through his options. And we'll be betting big. It's about half the pot. And Dario, not believing him, calls. And it's the first hiccup by Dario at the uh, heads up affair. And Andrea getting some chips. But it's still a two to one chip advantage for Dario, despite calling that river bet not believing his opponent. I am unsure outside of the Battle Malta how much Dario and Andrea have played together, but we do know that they are both seasoned pros. Brunson, a moment of silence for Doyle Brunson. Now that we see the 10 deuce, I will be quiet for 30 seconds. Rest in peace, Doyle. Unfortunately, Doyle passed away at the ripe old age of 89. I hope I make it that long. But he contributed so much to the game that we know and love. And they gave a nice ceremony for him at the World Series of Poker this year as well. So it's another limp pot. Nobody connecting with the King 3-4 board. He who bets it will likely get it. And 500, yeah. mm, this min bet Pass. should get the job done. And indeed it does. Dario is stealing one away from Andrea there. Power of position. looking at the time, perhaps he has somewhere to be or a fight to catch, but I don't think that's as important as a trophy. 
I chatted with him when we had the break uh, three-handed play, and he shared how much he really wants that trophy, and who can blame him? This is such a prestigious tournament, and to be among the winners in the glorious uh, history books of the Battle of Malta is something truly special. And Yun Yu, otherwise known as Andrea Liu, opening the button with this pretty Queen 8 suited heads up to 1.2. And Dario, with a, his Jack 8, is sort of dominated here, making the call. And Andrea flopping that flush draw, not much else so. But with Dario not having anything, very often expect Andrea to be betting this. And it looks like he did. I don't know the amount, but Dario snap folded. It was 1.4. It could have been a min bet, and he would have folded. And I like how both players are constantly aware of exactly how many chips they have. They can do the math and understand what their opponent has. That does influence bet sizings and other things. And for those of you just tuning in for the Heads Up Affair, this is Jason Glatzer coming to you live at Casino Malta for the finale of the 2023 Battle of Malta Spring Edition. This event attracted a whopping field of 1,992 entries to create a prize pool, a hair over 1 million euros to double, more than double, that 500,000 guarantee. Now, the one in October is going to be even bigger. It has a 1 million guarantee. Now, don't quote me on this part, but I won't be surprised if that doubles as well. But back to the action. We had a limp pot, but it's uh, Andrea Liu who flopped a uh, bottom pair on an ace-king jack board along with the Broadway gut shot draw. But it was Dario betting position with his queen deuce with the same gut shot draw. And now Andrea improved the two pair, but he has to be a little scared of this because that 10, if Dario had it, would have given him Broadway. And three of hearts on the river makes a pretty hand look prettier. And an easy fold by Dario. Your new understanding that Dario likely didn't have the 10 there after one check check. Happy to see a blank river. Would have been happy if it was a queen, obviously, because then he would have gotten maybe some value. And then he would have been afraid of any 10s in his hand, in his opponent's hand, which he didn't have anyway. So Andrea Liu, who was below 10 million not too long ago, has effectively doubled his stack without an all-in and call over the past few hands. And although Dario is ahead, it's uh, Andrea Liu who has that open ender. Let's see how Dario responds to a min bet. He responds with a call. He is, I guess, the top 1%. At least that's what his uh, patch says. He also has a full tilt Catania. Those are probably clubs in Sicily where he's from. Oh, this could be dangerous here. He has the open ender, but Dario improving here with that king has two pair now. He's not going to be going anywhere. He may even be raising here. Obviously, he has to be slightly concerned that Andrea may be betting with the five. But he shouldn't be overly concerned at this point, and does just call. And another king on the river, so the check mark over to Dario. If Andrea tries to bluff here, this could be problems. Dario, pretending he doesn't have anything, checks it over, hoping that Andrea puts some chips into this pot. And it looks like that's about what he's going to do. It is two million more that is going to go over to Dario. Dario will be raising here.
Mario is either Hollywooding or figuring out exactly how much he wants to raise. There is 6.5 million in the pot, so jamming over this is probably not the best strategy. For some reason in that graphics, that three of hearts is still on fire. Dario taking his time. Did raise eight million. Andrea not trying to bluff further here and gives up. And now it's Dario with the momentum back up to 37 million to Andrea's 13 million. Andrea still smiling. They're both hungry for that trophy and that 156,500 euro top prize. Meanwhile, they've both locked up 101,500 euro already for their 600 euro buy-in. And a limp by Dario with this suited 5-4. Andrea checking back his option from the big line with the 7-5 suited. And no help from the flop to either player. Ace three nine rainbow. Dario playing position once again and taking down another small pot. But the small pots add up as the blinds continue to go up. Dario getting a combination of cards and also when he doesn't get it, he seems to know exactly where he is. He did make one call earlier that gave five big blinds over to his opponent. But other than that, Dario has played pretty perfect heads up play. Andrea racing to one million. I would expect Barone to call here with his suited connectors. This is quite defendable. And that's what he does. So already more than 2 million in the pot, 2.5 million in the pot. Oh my, we have Dario flopping two pair on this ace, 10, nine, all club flop. But then we have Andrea Liu with second pair, nut flush draw. This could be it folks, I mean, this is quite the setup for both players, depending on how the action goes here. It is a scary board for Barone, so I'd expect him to be very often check-raising here. He did indeed check. Andrea Liu is betting. He's not going to be afraid to get it in with the amount of equity he has. We see it's pretty much a coin flip situation, despite Barone flopping that two pair. Andrea can win the hand with any club, any king, but I expect more and more chips to come in on this flop. And we have Dario raising it up to 2.5 million. And Andrea may come over the top right here, right now. At least that's what I would do. I'd be looking down at my hand. I have the nut flush draw. I have second pair. So even if my opponent does something, I have a lot of equity. But in this case, he's equity-wise ahead of Dario's two pair. It would be a great spot for Andrea to potentially double. If not, he could be hitting the rail, but I, one thing he's not going to do likely here is fold. He does just call. This could either save or hurt him, because now if a club comes, it's going to be easy for Dario to get away. Less so if it's like a king of spades or something like that. With just 17 big blinds left in Andrea's stack now, leading up to the eight of clubs turn. So now it's Andrea with the nut flush. 
looking very good to double, but is he going to be able to get any value from Dario? Is he going to try to hide the fact that he got a flush? In which case, that could wind up being dangerous for him at the board pairs. Andrea thinking through his options here. He does have the stone cold nuts at the moment. And we can see he's a massive favorite to win the hand if Dario stays in it. It looks like to maybe 2.4 million. 2.5 million. Can Dario get away from his two pair? There are clubs all on the board and does get away. Andrea maybe should have shoved that flop, but does get some chips the safe way as well, waiting to actually hit his hand. Unfortunately, once you hit that flush, it's gonna be awfully hard to get value. You just have to pray your opponent has a queen or jack of clubs, and not the jack and queen of clubs, because then <laughs> that would just have been a massive core, running the nut flush into a straight flush. We have Andrea Dominici, who uh, finished in third place, watching the heads-up action there in the background. Not the one on the phone, and right now Dario is blocking him. Maybe he swaps some action with, uh, with Andrea. That's a speculation. Of course, I don't have that information. But I know him and Andrea were quite friendly yesterday at the same table, and even when they were at different tables. They were battling hard against each other, so it's not that they were ever soft playing each other, but they are definitely friendly with each other. Holy cow, this could be the setup that of setups here. I mean, we have Dario raising to one million from the button with his jacks. This is the second time he's had jacks and heads up play. And I think really the only move for Andrea, I mean, he can call obviously, but I'm very often just shoving here. He does shove and we get a snap call here by Dario, just like that, that was fast. This could be it, folks. Andrea needs a six and only a six at the moment. Obviously, there's some other combinations that would get him a straight. Clubs, four clubs for a flush, but that's really about it. He would love to see a six, otherwise we're going to have a new winner of the 2023 Battle of Malta Spring Edition. And all the friends are now at the table. Some are probably rooting for a six. Others want Dario's jacks to hold. And let's see what happens here. It's a 10-10 king flops. And so far, Dario's jacks are far ahead of the sixes. 92% favorite to win the hand. And a five of hearts on the turn changes nothing. Now Dario, massive favorite to win the 2023 Battle of Malta. And what will the river card bring? Ace of Spades on the river! And even Andrea Lou getting into the clouds, big smile on his face, played his heart out. Would have loved that trophy. Instead, the trophy goes over to Dario Barone. Congratulations to Dario for winning 156,500 euro. Meanwhile, Andrea Liu, well done. You get a trophy as well for your run-up performance, 101,500 euro. Hugs for both players are appropriate. Amazing uh, final table to be watching. So much talent on this table. Final three, all Italian. But Dario Barone, who was recently at a final table in Malta, now hits that winner's circle. A massive congratulations to Dario Barone. And uh, thank you everyone who played the Battle of Malta. We had 1,992 entries in this main event. It was a fantastic week all week long. I want to thank quite a lot of people actually. And uh, I'm going to start with my colleague Arvid, who has done a fantastic job with the reporting all week long has covered the times when I have been needing breaks and has really done a lot more than what I asked of him, really trooping. I wish he wasn't 
going to be retiring at soon. Maybe we can pull him out of retirement for an event or two here and there, but he's going to be moving on to other things most likely. But massive thank you to you and to my Italian colleagues who you heard in the booth earlier. Cesare and Jack have done a fantastic job all week long. The video and photography crew as well. A massive thank you to the MST audiovisual crew. If you're interested in hiring their TV table services, contact them at info at mst.com.mt. A huge congratulations uh, to Dario. Thank you for him for being such a trooper. Thank you to Telly, Diane, and all the staff here at Casino Malta for hosting such a fantastic event. A major thank you to all the dealers, to all the floor, to Patricia, who you see here with the microphone as well, doing an interview of Andrea Liu. And last, but certainly not least, a massive thank you to all the players that made this event what it was. We wouldn't have had so much fun, so much excitement all week long if we didn't have players coming from far and near to join us for the 2023 Battle of Malta Spring Edition. And I guess thank you to myself as well. I had a good time. Uh, once again, this is Jason Glatzer here at the 2023 Battle of Malta Spring Edition. And see you in the autumn when the next Battle of Malta with a 1 million euro guarantee takes place in October. Peace and have a lovely Tuesday night. And uh, thank you for tuning in.